not fake intimacy. You can fake miracles, but you cannot fake an encounter. The Lord has prepared this platform, not just for you to hear another preacher, but I believe that tonight's program is a resonance from the realm of the Spirit, a reflection of the cry the fasting, the prayer of God's people for something higher, for something more, for something true. I believe that this meeting is a response of someone's hunger in the secret place. Saying, Lord, I have seen your glory, but I know there can be more. I have seen the prophetic, but I know there can be more. I have seen miracles, but I know there can be more. I have had access to deep dimensions of revelations, but I know there can be more. And truly there is more. And so I believe with all my heart, listen very carefully. There are many ways you will know. Teaching will only be one of the ways. There are certain realities you will learn tonight that you will not be taught. It will come by the Spirit. There are certain levels of spiritual knowledge that cannot be articulated with words. It's a spirit communication. When you expose yourself to the light of his spirit, it will be part of the things that you will carry along. And eventually your mind will begin to understand the things that you have received. And so let your heart be open. Whilst I teach, be sensitive to the ministry of angels not just the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I observe that our time is gone and I don't intend to keep us so long tonight. But then I truly, truly came believing that you were serious when you put this program together. Believing that you meant what you wrote. Believing that you were not just trying to satisfy a campus spiritual program that happens. God only comes to those who mean it when they call Him. He doesn't just come to those who call. He doesn't just come to those who speak. He discerns seriousness. His presence is too majestic to be toyed with and He will vet the seriousness of your desire. And this is what I believe the Lord has brought us to do. Oh, speak from your heavens and the earth will hear. Will you speak from your throne and my ears will hear? Oh, speak from your heavens and this place will hear. My altar is calling you. Oh God, my sacrifice is calling you. Oh God, will you speak from the heavens and will hear from earth? Oh, speak from your heavens and I'll hear from the earth. My altar. Oh, my worship oh, Take my praise Take my praise, take my praise. How can I do? 
not just singing, I'm speaking to your spirit man. Tonight you are learning the ways of the Spirit. For the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit. They are spiritually designed. Swallow your pride. Tonight come to the school of the Spirit. Don't you know in his eyes and the key to eternal life. Swallow your pride tonight. It's the school of the Spirit. Don't you know in His hand are the keys to eternal life? The little here, the little there, and your day will come. He's not working you, changing everything. You are the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. You're the Holy Ghost. She ma na na ne na ne na ne na na na. She la na ma sa na ni e ma na she la na. I've set my life free on me. I lose you to the light. I've set my life with only I lose you I've set my life with only I lose you I've set my life with only I lose you Sit down. They are not just songs, my brothers and my sisters. They are spiritual encodings that have been written upon your spirit man. They are only transmuted through singing. I'm not a musician.
That's why you came. You came as a reflection of a dissatisfaction. Psalm 63. Psalm 63. Psalm 63. Please bring for me a lady right now that will shout loud under the anointing to the hearing of everyone. The power of God is coming on a lady. A loud shout to the hearing of everyone. Please bring that person for me. I stand, I stand in all of you. I stand, I stand in all of you. Holy God, to whom all praise is due. Psalm 63. Let's discuss something. The Lord is speaking to this lady. I'm taking away the reproach of your family. I don't know who this lady is, but is living right now, today, and forever. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am opening your eyes to see. This is a word for someone. Not everybody. Don't just please. Let's not disorganize this. I'm ministering by the Spirit. When I talk to you, the power of God comes upon you if you are the person. It has nothing to do with, um, I just want to receive. No, these are exact words. I am opening your eyes. The Lord is granting the spirit of revelation. Seeing the eyes of an ego. M Mommy, our mother is one of the movement. The Lord is opening the eyes of this our mother. I don't know you, ma, but I'm seeing fire come upon your eyes that you will see. That you will see. There are eight more people. Eight more people. Two of them are in the choir stand. I see by the Spirit. I see an angel of the Lord standing on this row and says there are two people, right? Just please sit. You don't have to stand. Just on this row as I stand. Right to the back, front to the back. There are two people here. That grace. Two of them. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Hello, Madonna. Hold on. I don't know if this guy is a man of God, but I'm seeing a grace for the prophetic. I don't know who this gentleman is. Please shift this man on the floor. We'll, we'll, tomorrow we'll take our time to do the impartation not tonight I'm just ministering as a spirit this gentleman on the floor I'm seeing a grace that is coming upon you your life will never never be the same never ever be the same never ever be the same the angel of the Lord is asking me to stand here and he's saying there are two people here hold on please you don't have to stand the Lord is granting you a strange grace from the miraculous signs two of you right now right now two of you stepping into that dimension am i wasting your time tonight but i had a shield for me. 
your mind's no hurry. God will leave you out of But I will know how to shield you for me. And I Hallelujah. Someone in the minister's room here. I just saw light come on someone. On the I don't know who that person is, but the power of God is coming on you now. I hope you are not embarrassed that I'm speaking to the ministers. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, but I'm seeing an anointing coming on that person. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Jesus. My God. What is Owocho? Owocho. Is that somebody's name? Is there a name like that? Huh? Owocho. Who is that? I'm hearing the name Owocho. Or what show? Please, when you find the person, I, I need to at least teach something, even if it is for five, ten minutes. Abigail, who is Abigail? Abigail, I hear a name, Abigail. The Abigail I'm talking about is wearing a maroon shirt. You are a lady. You didn't cover your hair. You are wearing like a maroon shirt a short-handed shirt this is what i'm seeing is there someone like that who is that hello madonna hello 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 madonna my friend look at me tap that gentleman ask him to look at me lift your hands i'm seeing oil coming upon your head i don't know who you are but the spirit of revelation is coming on you right now you will never be the same i stretch my hands and i declare that grace you will drink of it and you will rise to realms you never imagined in the name of jesus christ where is Abigail? This is the lady. You are Abigail too. I want to pray for you. Huh? Where is your mother? Where is home? Okay, I will pray for you because I see the spirit of death roaming around your family. And the Lord is saying to counsel it. Don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. What I am rebuking from you. The Lord is rebuking from one lady in the choir now as I'm speaking. The manifestation of the spirit of death. You are Abigail too. Place your hand on your stomach. That pain goes now. Now, out. Help her. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. Let's find somewhere to at least teach the word of God. Majesty. Psalm 63. Psalm 63. I will be sharing with you from today and through tomorrow. The secrets of the kingdom that make for a man, a woman, a territory. 
to be mightily used by God. Please listen carefully. Don't, don't mind those under the anointing. They will not interrupt you. They will be silent. In every generation, please listen to me, right from Bible days and all through modern history, it seemed as though in every land and in every territory, God would find a few people. Sometimes it could be an individual. Sometimes it could be a family, a nation, a group that he would do mighty things in and through within the lifetime of that generation there has never been a generation where god did not find a witness a man or a woman that would represent his purposes like he's finding you right there the power of god is coming on you lifting your hands finding you so in every generation, there are men and women who, by a formula that I will be showing you, seem to posture themselves in an unusual dimension to be used by God within that dispensation. It has always been the cry of the Spirit. To find men and women who will not only love God but will avail themselves of God. One of them from scripture was a man called David, and I want us to explore his psalm. Something David said would begin to give us the key. And to usher us into these dimensions of understanding what it will take to host God in a territory, in a generation. What does it take to not only bring revival, but to be revival? What does it take to be a representative in experience? That your presence within a territory represents the assurance, the surety, and the continuity of God's program. There is a man who is accustomed to God's presence. A man who loved the presence of God more than the beauty of his royalty. And here's what he has to say. O oh God, thou art my God. He said, early will I seek thee. Timing matters in seeking God. He says, my soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longs for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Why am I seeking this? He says, to see thy power and thy glory so as i have seen thee in the sanctuary let me explain for you this prayer and this cry of this man of god lord why do i come to church and experience your mighty presence why do i experience signs and wonders why do i experience the grace to pray why do i experience a dimension of hunger when I'm in church but then when I'm alone in my secret place I don't seem to be able to transfer my experience that I have in church to my secret place he says I want to see your power in my life the same way I saw it in the sanctuary when I went for a crusade I saw people healed I saw people delivered what was in that crusade that cannot be carried to my life When I sat under a grace, I saw possibilities. What does it take, oh God, to transfer this reality as I saw in church, as I saw in a conference to my life? It says to see your power. It was a cry for an experience 
of a reality that until then was only seen corporately. Do I have to wait for a conference to experience your presence? Do I have to wait for a conference to see what the gifts of the Spirit look like? Do I have to wait for a conference to access the Spirit of Revelation? Oh God, I'm crying from my secret place. Transfer what happened in a conference to my life. Transfer the hunger that comes in the conference to my life. Transfer the prayer. Transfer the passion. Transfer the grace. To see your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. There was a dimension of you I saw in church that I don't have in my life. I thought you don't speak again until I came to church. Lord, what is wrong when I'm alone? Bring that voice to my secret place. Why do I pray two hours in church and I cannot pray five minutes alone? Transfer that same grace to see it in my life so that I become a testament of the possibilities that reside in the Christ. Let me not only be a hearer. I want it in my life. This is a man praying. I show you the secrets of the Spirit. It is not enough just to love God. It is not enough just to be born again. Listen to me carefully. It is not enough to even be willing to serve God. There are conditions. My brothers and my sisters, God loves everybody, but He cannot use everybody. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Just because you are available does not mean you are usable. The Bible says there are vessels that are unto dishonor. And there are vessels that are unto honor. The transition of the vessels is not dependent on God. It's a if a man. It is left for you to transit yourself to become a vessel that is unto honor. It says meat for the master's use. What then is the price to be used by God? What is the price, my brothers and my sisters, to be a mighty vessel of God here in the land of Kogi State or in this campus? What is the price? If there is a price, then this conference was designed to show you. What is the price that will make your song not only be a special number but a ladder that people will climb to the throne room. What is the price that makes your voice not only just the speakings of men, intellectual communication, theological exegesis, what translates your voice from just being a communicator to a revealer of the mysteries of the kingdom? It says, my heart is indicting a good matter. Then he says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. That you can write mysteries upon the hearts and the lives of people. What is the price to pay that when men see you, I hope you know that not everybody climbed up the mountain to see the face of God. God called only one man, Moses. See my face. The rest don't need to look at me. They should look at you. They can have the same experience. You have come down from that mountain with something that is the same. And so by looking at you, they can encounter what they would have had on that mountain. What does it take to be in experience? A representative of heaven. Now please sit down. Please sit down. I will not keep you long. 
I love the body of Christ and I am, I am so honored to be teaching the collective, the coming together of the church upon this campus. It is a beautiful experience. Listen to me. The greatest need in the body of Christ right now is not necessarily more revelation. Please listen to me. There is no time in history. I, I doubt, I may be wrong, but I'm a, a student of the move of God. And there is no time in modern history where there is such a downpour of spiritual revelation in the body of Christ as it is right now. Men and women all over this nation, all over Africa, and all over the world have been granted by the eyes of the Spirit to see dimensions in God, to understand depths. This is not the generation where you impress people by the depth of revelation because there are people who have gone really deep. Listen very carefully. Your edge is not revelation. Understand what I'm saying. Don't write it down. Just listen to what I'm saying. Once upon a time where the basis for the respect and the honor that comes to you as a man of God is the scarceness of the mysteries and the revelations that you dispense. Why? Because at that time, very few people understood certain principles of the kingdom so far. So sometimes you could find one man in a whole territory who would be able to properly articulate certain dimensions of God. But no more. Because there has been a multiplication of the grace and the dimensions for revelation. So that you can find even in a campus like this with students who are engaged in learning. And still you will find men and women who are deeply grounded in revelation. Who have stretched their spiritual understanding from border to border. So the challenge is not ignorance. We know many things. There are very few things in all honesty. Any serious Christian who has been properly mentored in this nation and in Africa... There are few things a man of God will teach that will be new. They will largely be fresh, not new. Because by the grace of God, and I boldly give credit to the many men and women of God within this nation and in Africa, we may not have done the best, but I think we have done something commendable to help the body come into some level of understanding. But let me tell you where the problem is. The lady on red, lay your hands on that lady shouting. Just do what I ask you to do. I didn't say pray, don't do anything. Just do what I ask you to do. This, just, just leave, just leave. This lady, you looking at me, lay your hands on that lady. Just do what I ask you to do. I didn't say pray, don't do anything, just do what I ask you to do. Please be patient with me. God is doing something in their lives. After which they will they are not shouting for nothing. They will be silent shortly. But there is something that God is doing. Thank you, Jesus.
We bless you. Leave them. Sit down. Just leave them and sit. Let's continue. It's okay. Leave them. You're done. You finish your work. Just sit. Now listen everybody. Let me tell you what I believe is one of the greatest issues with the body of Christ. We lack the level of encounters that can defend the propositions we claim about God. Please listen. Conferences in this nation and around the world are full of very, very challenging spiritual propositions. We know the things God can do. We know what He should do. And many times we make bold statements. But the, the, the great requirement to validate the claims, that is the missing link. And so our experiences are full of a lot of emotion and intellect but void of conviction. Why? Because the level of grace to demonstrate the validity of the things we claim is not there. And you see, over time, let me tell you this. Over time, what has happened, you don't have to bring those under the anointing out. No, don't worry, aside from those who are already out. Listen, over time, do you know what has happened? Members are already used to our, the, the limit of our communication to be just in theory. So you hear the songs we sing. God is mighty. He can change your life overnight. And members dance and they don't believe what they are singing. Because they have been trained that it is only a ritual. It's as though there is no experience. There is no substance. So a man of God can preach so boldly like I'm preaching. And return back to his secret place and say, I hope what I preach is true. I, I just hope God you would defend me. Because I made a lot of bold statements in your name. I hope I am right. It's a terrible thing to represent Christ from a standpoint of fakeness. There is a level of persuasion and conviction. It says, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Conviction. Conviction. So we sing all kinds of songs. God can change a man's life and people say amen. God can lift a man, amen. God can anoint a man, amen. God can give revelation, amen. And when all the theory is done, brothers and sisters, we stand and make God look like a fool in the presence of the people. So the psalmist said, I'm tired of pretense. Lord, show me your power. I do not want a Christianity that is only full of falling down and standing up and touching and turning people up down and there is no growth, no transformation, no substance of the reality of the life of God. Many things that we preach, we are not truly sure of. We only heard men of God that we respect preach it. So while listening to the message, we took notes. And we saw that those notes are excellent. And we transferred those notes to our various platforms. And preached it just like we had. But it has not become substance. Our results show that there is a gap between that revelation and our conviction. Are we together? The same way you can hear, for instance... A man of God write a song and you can come and stand and sing the same song. You can even kneel down and cry while you sing it. But you are surprised that the effect, because every song has a grace and a presence that comes with it. But now you are singing that song, but the people cannot discern the grace and the presence that shoot back that song. It means it was just a special number. Please listen brothers and sisters. I want to show you a very powerful secret that will change your life. 
the challenge with the body of Christ is not ignorance it is the substance of spiritual reality the grace and the power to be able to validate the things we claim to know and have seen about God how many people will tell you they have seen Jesus how many people will tell you they see angels every day go and read the Bible and see what happened to a man who saw just one angel yet we claim every time that we are seeing them on stage pastors and the effect that befits that level of encounter does not follow there are people who claim to i'm not being sarcastic please there are people who claim to see jesus every day and in every service jesus go and find out when saul of Tarsus saw jesus even those who didn't see were affected they knew something happened there is there is something wrong and if it is not corrected a day will come after 10 years of ministry you will turn back and say look i've been lying i give up and all those who have followed you will say so what do we do now you say i wasn't sure myself i was led that way hallelujah he said that which we have seen that which we have heard that which our hands have handled even of the word of life it says that is what we teach there is an experience of the kingdom my brothers and my sisters nicodemus comes to jesus by night in john chapter 3 and then this is what he says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god he says for no man can do these things except god be with him notice in the afternoon they will claim that they didn't love him but Nicodemus came to confess and said, don't mind all that nonsense we say in the afternoon. We know that you are a man sent from God. We see the substance. The things that our fathers told us, we see it in your life. And then Jesus said unto him, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then Nicodemus replies and says, Will I in my old age now enter into my mother's womb the second time? And then Jesus says, I say unto you again, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit. Then he changes his expression. He cannot enter an experience. Moses saw Canaan but didn't enter Canaan. Just because you have perceived realities, you know that miracles are part of the, the possibilities in God. You know restoration is part of the possibilities in God. You know that God can anoint men. It should not surprise you. But the substance of that reality. You are not, you are not in doubt that God can give speech. You are not in doubt that God can stay the hands of darkness over a family. See the kingdom. I know this is true. From where I stand, I can see the possibilities. But you need to enter into that experience. So that it no longer becomes something you are saying. Are we together? That is the difference between faith and trust. Faith is based on the integrity of the one who spoke to you you're believing the person you may not understand the dynamics of that operation if i tell you for instance come my friend if i tell this gentleman put your hand in my back pocket and you will bring out money remember he was not there when i was dressing he will need faith for this to happen he will have to go to the archives of my dealings to find out whether I have a track record of being a liar or not. So he will find out who did you give this instruction to before and what happened. Based on the antecedents, he will now believe me. But watch this. If I continue to tell him every day to pick money out of my pocket, a day will come he no longer believes me because I'm a man of integrity. 
he believes me because of a track record he also has that is trust you are not hoping it will happen there is a track record you are not hoping lives will be changed and so you are also watching to see you have also come into oneness with the ways of God and you know that you know the experience of the kingdom that when you speak as a preacher you are not asking someone so how was my preaching how was the service were you changed no you have come into an understanding of the power and the potency that comes with the word when it is explained properly and backed by the power of the Holy Spirit you know lives will change This is the missing link. Is the reason why our churches and fellowships are empty. Is the reason why we have members today and do not have members tomorrow. Is the reason why we ourselves are up spiritually and down. Backsliding has a science to it. There is an explanation. It's usually a product of repeated frustration. First secret. That you are just agreeing on a reality like every other person. But the substance of it is not in you. And the frustration that that pretense causes begin to have an effect on you. And it will get to a point where you no longer can bear it. And say, I'm tired of lying. We sing songs like, I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. And whilst you are singing that song, the truth is you look at your life and you see that it's not true. It's not true. It was someone else's testimony, but it's not so. Listen to me. I came by the grace of God in this conference, not just to teach you, but like an initiation to bring you into a realm and a dimension of the substance of spiritual reality. That the things that some of you already know, that the grace and the ability to stand in that pedestal in the spirit where you can validate that claim. That you went home as a man of God and you said, I'm a student of KSU and they teach us well here. Alongside my academics have been trained spiritually. And they say, prove it. And you say, for instance, I've been trained that prophecy is powerful. And I speak that this family let things turn around. But nothing happened. Remember, that question mark is still hanging in your family. So every time they say man of God, everybody says man of God except your loved ones. They have not seen a reason to agree. They, of course, they, they, they will have to just, they, they will smile just for the, the sense of nationhood. But they don't yet agree. But the day you tell them, I am truly a portal and a gateway from the throne to the earth. And let me prove it. Father, lift them. Just that prayer. And heaven moves in a way and manner. They will call you and say, sorry. Um, what did you say the other time? You said, no, what I said is not the issue. It was a relationship. Even if I said, God, bless them. Even if I said, you are blessed. It is not the linguistic accuracy. I'm just showing you what a portal can do on earth. It is impossible to claim that you host God. And then you stand in a place and the people cannot experience God. No. It's not about power. Listen. It's not about calling for manifestation. It's the effect of the dimension from which you stand in. Listen to me. Read the Bible. There was no time when a man was open to a vista in the spirit that those around were not affected by it. They didn't have to believe. Once you open a gateway that is higher than the three-dimensional realm, everybody within that spiritual circumference must know. It's true. So, 
when Jacob in chapter 28 of Genesis the Bible lets us know that Jacob placed a stone in loss and then he was to sleep lying down to sleep Jacob suddenly is open to a dream and he sees a ladder that connects the earth to the heavens angels ascending and descending did you know that whether Jacob saw it or not it was a reality that was happening it was not his scene that made it happen and he said the Lord was in this place and I knew not he said surely this is the house of God the gate of heaven that means there is a condition for every place to be called the house of God it must have a gate from the ground there to the throne room for any place to be called a church a place the house of God the requirement is that there must be a portal from that place that touches the throne if it is the house of God it must have a gate that opens to the heavens but let me share with you in the next two minutes just one key and then we'll continue tomorrow what is the price to see the power and the glory of God made manifest. Price number one is the price of consecration and surrender. Please write it down. The first spiritual requirement for any man any woman any church any organization any territory to be able to host god in superior dimensions within the lifetime of that dispensation please listen very carefully now let me teach you something you need to understand um uh, like i said tomorrow by god's grace we'll have some more time to teach before um, we do the impartation and so on and so forth when you read Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 the Bible tells us that thanks be to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ everybody say all spiritual blessings so you have to understand certain information here please look up number one that we have been blessed with how many spiritual blessings all spiritual blessings but that they are routed to the Christ that means for the believer listen carefully the foundation of your spiritual journey is your encounter with the Christ are we together now it is it has to be in that progression that when you encounter the Son of God Apostle John was writing and he said this is the record he says that God has given us the way we call it eternal life he says and this life is in his son so that whosoever had the son had that life are we together now so when you encounter the son of the living God you have his life and part of the packages that come potentially as Apostle Paul is teaching the church in Ephesus is that we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings that they are spiritual in context number two that they reside in the heavenlies number three they are only routed through the Christ now you on there's a reason why I came to this scripture because many believers and I'm glad that there are all kinds of denominations here and you need to understand this it is a fact that the realities that we seek to come into are not things that God is necessarily trying to give us they are realities that have been provided for they reside in the Christ and that they are accessible to the saints when the saints are in the Christ are we together now this is doctrine you must understand this it's very important so you are not necessarily trying to coerce or manipulate the hand of God to release something that is outside of the possibilities that have been resident in the Christ the Bible says all spiritual blessings and that includes the grace that you seek to experience within this conference that it resides in the Christ are we together now 
But the second thing I want to teach, and that's why I brought forth this scripture, we're rounding up, is that there are two dimensions, please listen, in the dealings of God with man, as far as his word reveals to us, there are two dimensions of his spiritual operation. Say two dimensions. When God speaks, he speaks from these dual dimensions. And if we do not understand it, it will be both the origin and, and, and the, 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 the basis for our confusion, our imbalance, our error, and our lack of experience in spiritual realities. The first dimension, I call it the prophetic speakings of God. Now listen, when God speaks, He speaks from a prophetic dimension. It is in His character. I hope you know that God is not limited by time. Are we together now? I hope you know that God is not even limited by eternity. God cannot be limited by eternity. Because eternity is also a function of time. Eternity is the summation of infinite dispensations. It is also governed by time. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, it says in the beginning, not from the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That means he was in neither of the two. You have to be outside a thing to create it. Are we together now? Please listen, listen. Sit down, sit down. I'm teaching you something. So if he created the heavens and the earth, he was somewhere that was neither heaven or earth. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. And when the apostles saw him, he called that realm a dimension of unapproachable light. Please listen very carefully. Understand what I'm teaching you. So when God speaks, He speaks from that... Uh, dimension is not a good word. He speaks from that realm. And based on that realm, the communication should not look like it is time dependent. That is proof that it came from His realm. That means if God talks to you from that realm, He will not attach time to His speakings. He is Alpha Omega. The word and is not there. Alpha Omega. When you say God is Alpha and Omega, it means if he is in one place, he can't be at the other place. And here, I can't be both at the same time. But when you call him Alpha and Omega, he does not have to be in the end. Are you getting what I'm saying? That dimensional concept of movement to get to the end is something that only humans experience. In fact, even once you are higher than the three-dimensional realm, some of those dimensions don't even exist. Please listen very carefully. So he is Alpha Omega. That means that in the speakings of God, if you just stay and listen raw, just the way God talks, you are not going to know whether the thing has happened or will happen. Everything from God's standpoint has happened. There is no future in God. God does not have a future. Please understand this. If God has a future, who is bringing it? The, the concept of tomorrow, listen, please. You need to understand this thing. The concept of tomorrow does not happen with God. The concept of forever does not happen with God. They are borrowed terminologies to help the saints understand God. In his realm, those vocabularies don't exist. There's no such thing as tomorrow. There's no such thing as yesterday. In fact, there's no such thing as today. In God's realm is now. Please listen. Now, that's a realm that no man can understand by himself. So you will understand how the Bible was written. When the Holy Spirit came upon holy men, they wrote, they did not understand what they were writing. When you read the Bible, you are going to see a lot of spiritual realities that the Bible tells you have been finished, are done. For instance, from the foundation, the Lamb was slain. 
So if you had read that scripture before the arrival of Jesus, if Jesus came to the earth, you would say that's an error. He has already come. He has already died. The speakings of God. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Based on that dimension, everything there is finished, is done. But because God is dealing with men, and when He created earth, He carved out a dimension of times and seasons. He needs to break down His dealings to accommodate the system He put with men. The second dimension of His speaking, or the dealings of God, is the experiential manifestation in the world and the life of men. Please listen. So there, is, there are prophetic realities from God's standpoint. And then there is the experiential manifestation of those things. In God's mind, there should be no sinner on earth again. Do you agree with me? In God's mind, there should never be a need for an altar call again. Because based on what Christ did, there is no reason for one person to still be unsaved. But in experience, there are still people going to hell. In experience, there are still territories that are unsaved. So when you go to save sinners, you are not negating the reality of what Christ has done. You are creating the platform for it to manifest experientially in the world of men. If you don't understand these dimensions, I just thought you will never be able to walk in the power of God. Because when God speaks to you, you think he will say, I will anoint you. He will look at you and say, I hope the anointing is working in you. And you say, Lord, this one now. That's his realm. When God speaks to you, he does not say, go and farm. He says, I hope you are eating the crops. And he says, God, for which farm now? While he's talking, seeds are not yet on the ground. You have to know how he speaks. You have to know how to translate his speakings to edify you. This is the mistake with the body of Christ. So we pick the prophetic speakings of God, bring it to the world of men, and act as if the world of men does not have time component. It does. There are times and seasons when the word came to the earth. What happened? He grew. Everybody say he grew. He subjected himself to time and process. And Jesus grew. Why would the word grow? But he grew. So while it is true that God has given us everything, I'm digressing a bit. I've not even started explaining point one. But then I'm teaching you that everything you are about to receive from God's prophetic standpoint has been given to you. But you're receiving it in experience it's not like many people may want to look at it. You are not trying to negate the fact that Christ has given it. You are aligning with the conditions that make for it to be manifest in your life. For instance, let me use a common example. We talk a lot about the blessing, right? The, the blessing of the Lord. I know you know by now, you've listened to preachers all around the world that say you are already blessed. You are not going to be blessed. You are blessed. But you put your hands in your pocket and bring it out and you will find reason to think again and say, so where is it? So when you get a job, for instance, and they begin to pay you salary and you put your hand. Remember two years before you put your hand, you were blessed and nothing happened. Two years later, you put your hands with a job and now money is coming out, for instance. And you look at it, you, it is not... Your, your walking now gives substance to that reality. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So there are many believers who do not see a need to grow in the power of God. Why? Because they believe all the power has been given. And all the power that has been given, not one of it is working in their lives. This is a mistake. The prophetic speakings of God is not a lie, but the ability to come to the world of men and translate that reality is not there. So there are people who will tell you, no, I can't be a failure. The Bible says I'm a success and you are right. But in experience, there is nothing that shows that. 
So Paul teaching the Hebrew says, he was quoting the Psalm of David. He says, there is nothing to be put under his feet that he, do not, he did not put. He said, but now we do not yet see. We do not yet see. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 6. I apologize. Um, just give me two minutes. You see why I was contemplating whether to teach or not. It takes a while to help people understand. Let's go to verse 8 so that I just round up. Verse 8. Okay, let's, or 7. Let's look at 7. That's, that's what I'm really looking for. Now, watch this. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. You know that, you know that scripture, right? The Psalm of David. He's quoting it now. And has crowned him with glory and honor. Notice, you have done it already. And did set him, this is man, over the work of your hands. Verse 8. Thou hast put how many things? He's talking of the prophetic dimension of God's reality. Thou hast put all things under his feet. For in that he put all things in subjection, he left what? Nothing that was not under him. That means in God's mind, man, you have total control. But now in experience, but now, but in our realm, but in this frame of reality, we see not yet. It looks like a contrast. No. It's the same explanation from two different dimensions. From our standpoint, we do not yet see all things. So it's possible to go to bed and see the ministry already built. And see the headquarters already finished. It's not a lie. And you wake up and all through your lifetime you will never enter there. It's possible to get to the realm of the spirit and see a five points. You saw your CGPA, but when the result comes out, you see 1.5. And you say, what happened? Between that reality and this reality, you miss something that authorized that disparity. This is what I want to teach you. You saw the man alive and did not die in the realm of the spirit. And you say, ah, he's going to leave. I've seen it in a vision. You are correct. But two days later, he died physically. Now you are wondering, I don't know if I'm the only one here, but many of you are in a dilemma, contrasting realities. You were praying for the meeting as a man of God and you saw signs and wonders. And when you went for that meeting, you even saw the person you saw in your vision sitting on the wheelchair, but you rounded up that meeting and he didn't stand up. But remember in the vision you saw him jumping. Something is wrong. But now, we do not yet see but now, we do not yet see that anointing that God says is on you, on you. But now, we do not yet see that dimension of grace. What then is the dynamics, the system of conversion that can take the spiritual reality that is complete from the Father's standpoint to the Christ and make it manifest in your life? This is what I am teaching. I took out all this long journey because we come from different ministries and different denominations. And if I approach the subject of consecration and surrender, just hearing it without this explanation, you may be in the dark. There will be contrasting beliefs. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now let's go to the first point. Then we'll pray. I said the first key is consecration and surrender. No, not Ephesians 1 3. That's not the verse for surrender. I just digress to put the scripture there. The Bible says, listen to me. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord, please listen to me, standard sure. Having this seal, there is a seal on that foundation. The Lord knoweth them that are his. That means not everybody is his. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And then he says, Let everyone that name the name of Christ do what? I thought naming the name of Christ should have freed you from it. He says, If you name the name of Christ by yourself, depart from what? Iniquity. Verse 18. I mean, I'm 20 now. 
I meant to say. But in a... Now, this is not talking about... Notice that all the vessels he's about to mention are inside the great house. None of these vessels is outside the great house. They are all inside. Both the vessels of honor and dishonor, they are all inside. So, he's talking about a family affair. Just because you are born again, does not mean that is all. You are in that house, like the Ark of Noah, but there are different levels and kinds of vessels. The Bible says, but in a great house, listen, there are not only vessels of what? Gold and silver, but of wood and of clay or earth. He says some vessels are unto honor and some unto dishonor. 21. What is the condition? He says, if a man, therefore, shall purge himself from this, he shall be. He shall be. That means until then he is not. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, comma, and then meet for the master's use. The master wants to use men, but not everybody in that house is qualified to be used. Please listen to me, believers. There is a level of genuine surrender. I hope you know when you give, when you get born again. I know we say that you gave your life to Christ, but that's not a condition for being born again. In being born again, you don't give your life to Christ. You receive his life. There is no mention of a man giving his life to Christ to be born again. When the Bible talks of giving your life, it talks of surrender for service. Salvation is receiving the life of God. When God now begins to make demand of your own life, then it is because He wants you to be used. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, that you what? Offer your bodies. He was talking in terms of service. Offer your bodies unto God. Holy and acceptable, He says, which is your reasonable act of service or worship. I tell you why many believers cannot host the power of God. I tell you why many people cannot walk in the dimensions that they desire in Christ. We do not know the difference between being consecrated or not being consecrated. We just believe generically that every vessel, just because the Lord is rich unto all, we believe that automatically we are okay like that. No, sir. Truly speaking, let me tell you sincerely, there is a depth of surrender and consecration. A separation. An understanding, listen to me, that Christ must be Lord and must be priority and must be everything. The jealousy of God does not allow him to share a place with anything in your life. It is not enough for God to be in your heart. Where in your heart is He? Your heart is like a chamber. Your heart is like a house. If I'm in your toilet, I'm in your house. If I'm in your garage, I'm in your house. But I'm, I will not be honored being in the garage in your house. So it's not enough for Jesus to be in your life. Where is He in your life? He begins to cry until He sits at the throne of your heart. Let me tell you this. The price of surrender is death. Everybody say death. Hmm. You may not like what I'm saying, but it is true. The price of genuine surrender and consecration is death. You must become a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice. He says, so then death works in us, that life will work in you. Only dead vessels can carry God. The weight of God is too heavy for you to carry when you are alive. I have been crucified with Christ. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 says, Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ that lives in me. He says, And the life that I now live in the flesh, that is the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Believers, let me tell you this. The degree to which you are died, death to the flesh, death to the things of this world, a detachment experientially 
He says, love not the world, neither the things of the world. He's not saying don't have them. The word is eros. An affinity to the things of this world that can make them become God to you. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in this world. He says, whoever loves um, this world, the love of the Father is not in him. Then he categorizes the things of this world into three. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I have seen many preachers who want the power of God. And their motif, they are not yet dead. The reason and the motif is to have something to outshine others. The reason, you know you are dead when there is only one word in your mouth. Lord, it is not my will, but your will. You know? Those who are alive in themselves have their wills and they impose it. They use God to achieve their wills. The language of dead men is, Lord, nevertheless, not my will. It is what you want, not what I want. I'm not using you to achieve my plans. I stand back and I allow you to be Lord in experience of my life. That my life is like an offering like they sang to see you glorified. That's it. I have no business building any empire. Please listen to me. I've taken a little of your time but you must hear this. Praying impartation and praying mantles will just be jamboree and stories. Until the vessel is on fire. That's when the glory comes. Every time the glory came upon the temple, there was already a sacrifice burning. It's important to understand this. One secret upon my life, I know that you have been blessed by the teachings and our ministry. Let me tell you this. It is more than fasting. It is more than prayer. This man you see standing before you, I've surrendered my entire will. Truly speaking. Truly speaking. Truly speaking, I have no business raising any empire or anything for myself. No, no. Looking for fame, looking for this now. Thank God for all of the honor. But God sees my heart and he sees my life. This man standing before you is a dead vessel. That God, whatever you can do with me, please do. If it's possible and you desire to use me to represent the face of your possibilities to a generation I am there. If you can make that commitment tonight, then you share your grace and go and sleep. And you will know that you've taken a step to the place of the anointing. The first requirement to make the oil is to crush it. The oil does not fall from the olive on the tree. It goes through that cross. Please understand this. Many of you here seated looking at me. You are well meaning and sincere. But you have not yet assumed the posture for true spiritual power. The corruption and the tendencies that reside in our hearts. And please don't feel bad. I'm not trying to insult you. I love you with all my heart. I'm only revealing to you a reality that will allow us to press for brokenness. So that we can host the glory of God and the glory of God will feel comfortable on you the same way it is in heaven. There will be no difference because you are broken completely. Surrender. Not a name for yourself. All you want is to see Jesus glorified. All you want is to see his kingdom come. Not to build an empire. Apostle Joshua Selman. Have you heard about that great man of God? Have you heard about those wonderful things? Thank God for those things. But my brothers and my sisters, if you are trying to use God as an instrument to get saved, His jealousy will fight you. He sits in a class all by himself. God can give you something and still fight it. When if anything that stands his way, including you, is his enemy. I show you the first key. Surrender. That's it. You can fast and not surrender. 
you can pray for eight hours and not surrender just because you were told that prayer can activate the anointing you go back and pray and dissipate a lot of spiritual energy in hope to draw every ounce of strength you can study greek and hebrew words with the desire to prove your level of spiritual competence and by so doing gain some kind of respect among the space of men of God and believers and the heart of God continues to vet your sincerity while all of that motion is going on you find out that you fast for 40 days and you never live with any power you study and study and study and you never live with any power because all those things are only activated on the altar of surrender spiritual activities are useless the key to god's power is not fasting the key to god's power is not prayer the key to god's power is not night vigil the key to god's power is not sowing seeds all those things only make sense when you are dead try them from the depravity and the corruption of your heart and you will be disappointed is the reason why many people do it and when they don't find it they say this man something is wrong because i did what i think should not a a a a charmer take it down mike let's rise for your glory i will do anything just to see you to be for you and for your glory lord i will do anything just to see Oh, you ask my name. Wanna be where you are? One prayer point, Father. Every tendency to build an empire using your grace, every corruption in my heart, every desire for vain glory fame outside you and attempts to want your power for self-aggrandizement and appetite to outshine my colleagues let that flesh be laid upon the altar of sacrifice tonight are you praying are you praying <laughs> Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Jesus had mentored the disciples. We'll sit down shortly. Training them, please sit, sit, go ahead. Jesus spent three years plus mentoring his disciples, teaching them the ways of God. And then he departed, routing through the gate of death. Please listen carefully. Then they were now confused he had spoken to them about the reality of the father he had spoken to them about the possibilities that the kingdom he was proposing to them carried and now jesus had gone and they were afraid to the point that peter felt disappointed alongside the other disciples and when you read john 21 don't turn there he said, I go a fishing. Let me go back to what I was doing before he called me. Because it looked like there was no future to his destiny again. He had left fishing to follow Jesus in hope that Jesus would conquer Herod and Caesar 
and establish a new kingdom and that being the members of his cabinet they would find a place when he were exalted now jesus had gone and left them in trouble so in that frustration peter said i go a fishing then the other disciples also said we go with you let's return back to our lives cut the long story short jesus comes back to life and then eventually they are in the upper room the same room where they had the communion and the bible says for a period of 40 days after his resurrection he kept teaching them on the matters of the kingdom the remaining part of the lecture he did not cover he was quickly trying to cover it are we together and in one of the teachings he began to speak to them in acts chapter 1 about the restoration of the nation of israel the physical restoration that happened historically he was telling them that a time would come when the nation of israel would be free from the liberty the influence and servitude from the roman government so they were excited and then they said will you at this time restore the nation of israel jesus replies and says it is not for you to know the times that the father has put within his care then verse 8 he says but ye shall receive power this is the information that is sufficient for you that you shall receive power anything you can receive you can reject too but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you now please listen very carefully he didn't say you will receive power and choose whether you love and want to be with the holy spirit no rephrase this that the holy ghost will come first and then in his doing something to you you will receive power it is not the power that brings the holy ghost it is the holy ghost that brings the power among many other things that he brings and then the bible says that that ministry of the holy spirit please listen alongside the power that he brings will make you a witness everybody say witness it says you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem in judea samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth this is jesus teaching now and when he made this statement the bible tells us that he stood and began to levitate into the heavens and a cloud of witnesses came and received him and two angels came and comforted the people and that was the end of the matter now listen very carefully you shall receive power but the first thing that will happen to you come is that as a naive weak believer he said a personality will be introduced to you give me your hands the holy ghost that it is in partnership with the holy ghost that eventually among the many things that he brings to your life is power please listen that means that when you reject the holy spirit and all that he represents you will also reject the power that comes with him you have to understand this many believers want anointing many of you want a situation where you see very heavy spiritual power at work in your life in your ministry your academics etc and it is god's desire to make you that anointed but not outside of the holy spirit please you must understand this when you meet with a herbalist he will conjure a charm and give it to you a personality physically as it were does not have to follow you don't even need a relationship it was so designed that spiritual power in this kingdom is a derivative of a relationship please listen carefully you don't need to know the name of a herbalist to receive his charm you don't even need to know his tribe you just need to come and say mister i need abc and he gives you something and you do the rituals and that's it but in this kingdom that when you desire power the power is towards something being a witness but first and foremost you are not qualified for that power until god sees the regard come 
for the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes first. And then what happens between you and Him? Now listen please. Oh dear. I pray that God will give us understanding. We will pray. You know, because of things like impartation, because of things like mediums you can carry, handkerchief, oil, etc., etc., most believers are gradually getting away from the need and the appetite to know the person of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it looks like it is very difficult to relate with Him. So I easily relate with an oil. I'm seeing a bottle of oil anointed by an anointed man. I place it on my head and right, I begin to work miracles. We like those things. Impartation is not wrong. You're going to receive it in the night. But listen to me very carefully. I teach you the path of sustainable spiritual power. That the Holy Ghost comes first. It is the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life. There are certain things that He does in your life. And then it qualifies you to now not only host his power, but to be able to dispense it in a way that translates you to be a witness. Listen very carefully. Your assignment as revealed by God himself is to be a witness. Not a man of God. Not a student. Not a banker. Listen carefully. Not an apostle, not a prophet. All of those things are the geography of your witness. So if God is sending you to equip the body, then you are called apostle, prophet, etc. If God is sending you into the finance realm, you are called a businessman, a CEO. But in God's economy, we are all called witnesses. A witness is a validator of a claim. Listen very carefully. Until there is a basis for contention, a witness is not necessary. When you go to the court of law, please listen. If this gentleman um, were caught stealing and he was summoned in court and the gentleman refuses and says, no, 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 I did not carry anybody's property. Usually the judge will say, is there a witness? Someone who was probably an eyewitness or someone who can come and validate the claim. Many things Jesus said when he was on earth. He said many things about heaven. He said many things about the love of the Father. Now listen very carefully. The manifestation of his power on earth in his lifetime was not just a revelation of the sovereignty of heaven. It was also a revelation of the love and the benevolence of the Father. Are we together now? Remember the object of God's activity with man is and God so loved the world. So his love has always been his motivation for interacting with men. Listen carefully. Not a desire to be served. Not a desire to be king. The motivation behind God's dealings with men. Because you see, if you don't understand the love of God, you will think he's a biased and cruel king who just wants people to surrender all and keep serving him as though an insecure king. No. For God so loved the world. Apostle John also taught us, he said, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. Are we together now? In that we are called sons of God. So we are not in doubt of the love of God. When the power of God comes upon your life and the miracles, the signs and the wonders like he did Jesus. He revealed the glory of the Father. And the highest dimension of the Father's glory is his love. I hope you know the love of God is part of his glory. The glory of God is every dimension that makes him God. The highest of them being love. So the Bible says, this beginning of miracles, the wedding in Cana, Jesus did and manifested his glory. There is a dimension of God's glory that he seeks to be revealed. The dimension of his love, the dimension of his grace, the dimension of his power, 
And so listen, because of this motivation, He will empower you so that you will go and correct a misunderstanding about Him. Now listen, the earth is at the mercy of what the saints teach and show them about God. Their interpretation of who God is, is from the lens of the excellency of the saints. That means that if there is a dimension of God's power and grace that my life cannot reveal, I will erroneously mentor a territory into believing that God cannot be that. Listen carefully. Remember, Jesus came as an expression of the Godhead. Are we Bible students here? So we're not in doubt as to the fact that you, whatever, because you see, until then, they never knew God. In the Old Testament, God could not be known. Are we together? He could be heard. He could be believed. But there was no possibility of a personal relationship with God at a corporate level. It couldn't have been possible. God will isolate individuals. And on the basis of covenant, He will reveal dimensions of Himself to them. And then authorize them to share that dimension with the people. That was why when you read in the Old Testament, they attributed anything supernatural to God, whether it was good or evil. It was a reflection of their limited understanding about God. There are religions in the world today that still do that. Every occurrence at all that is outside of the scope of science, they attribute it to God. Now Jesus comes as the Word made flesh. An example of who God is. Watch this. He's in the temple in Luke chapter 4. And they brought to him a scroll of Isaiah to read. He reads his own prophecy. And he says, this day is this scripture fulfilled. Then he looks at someone with a withered hand. Everybody say power. He looks at someone with a withered hand and says, stretch your hand. And the man stretched his hand. It was a miracle. Everyone was surprised. Never had a priest and any of the people demonstrated God that close. They had proposed that God was powerful. But here and now, bringing the reality that resided in the heavens. The kingdom is within your hand, your reach. You can grasp it. Please understand what I'm sharing this morning. And then we pray. When Jesus... Saw a woman who had been stricken with fever, Peter's mother-in-law. The Bible says he reached and grabbed her and took her. When Jesus got to a place where there was no fish, he gave an instruction and all of a sudden they caught so much fish. When Jesus went and saw Jairus' daughter and then the centurion, he brought them back to life. The question was, the power of God was helping him to demonstrate something. Please listen very carefully. And now he said, just like me, when you receive this power, it will make you to become a witness, a validator of everything we have agreed that God is. There are many things the Bible says God is. And there are many things the Bible says God is not. Satan's assignment is to disprove everything God has claimed he is. Listen to me carefully. So when Satan oppresses this brother and his family and everything around him and he's not rising, nobody is moving forward. It's not about oppression. Satan is using this man like a painter will use a canvas to draw something. Satan is using man to speak to God. Are you getting the idea now? God, if you claim you are love, and if you claim creation should believe that you are love, why is this man this way? So there is a contention between the devil attempting to sabotage on God's claims. And God sits down as though helpless in heaven, waiting for a witness, a validator. In other words, I am God and I am love. And the statement that Satan is making to me through man is wrong. But who will prove? Are you seeing that now? And until a man shows up, God remains like a liar. So he's misinterpreted 
based on the things that happen to men. So he says, you are witnesses. In other words, every time there is reason to doubt God, he sends you there. Every time. He searches for the territories where there is something about God that is not being believed. And he says, go and be a validator. When I said I can restore the years that the canker worm has stolen, I was not lying. And then the devil uses your academics and says, God, show this. This guy is in final year. One more session. Come and prove that you can restore. And God says, all right, let me show you what my kingdom and the power that resides within it can do. And in one session, how many sessions? One session. Something will happen that you may not, it will surprise you. That in your second semester, they go back and say, sorry, we don't understand what happened, but a mistake was made in your CGPA. There's something we discovered two years ago. It's not about CGPA. God is speaking back to Satan. I control time. There is something I can do. Listen, you have to discern the purpose of power. So there are statements from Satan to God, from God back to the earth. And the microphone that is used to speak is man. When Satan tears down your family, he's doing something to you. That's why many of you go back to your parents and they say, look, this God thing, bah, we did it when we were young. We're serious and we serve God. And he didn't do anything. You see, an understanding was incorrectly constructed by the absence of power. The power of God could not be made bare. And so certain results could not be seen. And that lack of result created an understanding about God that is dangerous and faulty. So he says, where is the witness that can arise from this family? And for many years, nobody will be able to arise. And then suddenly you show up. You show up with a lot of zeal, but no power. You see that? You shall receive power. There is a lot of points to prove on earth, Jesus says. But I cannot send you this way. You must receive power. First, the Holy Spirit is introduced to you. And there are many things that he will teach you. Jesus himself was talking about the Holy Spirit. He said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. He says, how be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come. He says, he will guide you into all truth. He will take that which is mine and he will give it to you. He will show you things to come. Is that not what the Bible says the Holy Spirit would do? So he comes into your life and begins to activate your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. And he helps you to know the word of God. And he constructs your spiritual understanding to be able to host greater dimensions of his power. Then as a reward for your staying with him, you receive power. It's not something that generically happens. I think there is a lot of... Um, you see, let, let me teach you something. And I don't mean to be sarcastic. Love everybody. But please, before you receive from people, vet the results that follow what they say. Be careful to not just swallow things out of loyalty to people. You have to be sure that when people communicate certain dimensions of spiritual reality, they have sustained the grace and the power to validate that claim. Otherwise, you may believe a lie for a long time and suffer sincerely. It says to be careful lest your light be darkness. I say this because there are several people, and I say this with, with a lot of respect and regard to the body of Christ. I've heard several people teach about the anointing, write books about the power of God, and I submit to you sincerely, very few people truly understand the power of God. It's true. Very few people. It's the reason why there is a lot of knowledge, and there is no genuine manifestation of the power of God in the body. The Holy Spirit was never supposed to be isolated in your life, in your journey to spiritual power. He is not only the compass, He is the custodian of the power of God. 
The first revelation of the Godhead in the Bible was the Spirit of God. The Spirit of the living God. And the Spirit hovered around the face of the waters. When Ezekiel the prophet, listen carefully, it was the Spirit of God that took him to a valley that was full of dry bones. And he said, I prophesied as I was commanded, and there was a sound. You sang it yesterday night, the rushing wind. The same wind that came in Acts chapter 2. Now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, 2 verse 1 says, They were all gathered together in one accord. Then suddenly, the Bible says, there was a sound. Huh? That sound from heaven like a mighty rushing wind. And it came and filled the room where they were sitting. The Bible says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And began to pray in tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. witness he wants you to be a validator of a claim that when someone looks at you and says sorry i have i have heard that god can give people speed and acceleration in life is it true and then god says answer him you are my voice dear and you say yes it is true and he says but why is my life this way then the power you have received comes into the scene listen Every witness has a token of truthfulness. It's called evidence. Everybody say evidence. You are not a witness until you have evidence. And evidence is a token of truthfulness. That means that you must have something like an exhibit. A proof that you were there. If someone were stealing and you held a camera and captured it. That camera and the video that you show is your evidence. You cannot claim to be a witness for His Majesty until you have evidence. So He gives you that power as the evidence, the validation that you are a witness. Listen carefully. The validation that you are a witness. Nicodemus came to Jesus in John chapter 3 by night. Here's what he said. Rabbi! We know that you are a witness. We know you are a man sent from God. Why? For no man can do these things. Not say these things. I write to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Do and teach. Not teach alone. Do and teach. A witness the only reason why they believe Jesus was sent from God was they saw certain results that could not have been human when Jesus resurrected and told Peter to cast his net and Peter caught fish he told him depart from me I'm a man of iniquity you must have that evidence as proof man of God listen to me it's not enough to just have revelation and share on stage. God is A, B, C, D. And then you say, I come in the name of the Lord. I am a man sent from God. If you are, where is your token of truthfulness? Like if every student sitting here has an ID card. Is that true? If I claim to be a student of this university, for instance, or even a lecturer, you don't need to disturb yourself asking too many questions. Just ask one question. Show me your ID card or your admission letter in the absence of either of the two I do not have a token a validation so the power of God comes upon your life among other things as his signature upon you that you are authorized to represent him you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 Peter was in the house of Cornelius Being brought there by the vision that he saw That would be the first time the Gentiles would come into salvation And he said how God anointed Look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus Christ With the Holy Ghost and with power Listen carefully He went about Doing what? You don't do good by good intention It takes power 
doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him the messianic prophecy Isaiah 61 the prophet is speaking and then he says the spirit of the Lord is upon me he says for the Lord has anointed me too he begins to list the things the possibilities that can happen this was speaking about Jesus but then prophetically it was also extending to the body it takes the anointing to preach good tidings to the meek it takes the anointing to bind the brokenhearted not a bandage it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives the opening of prison to them that are bound and then verse 2 says that to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord even the prophetic requires the anointing it's not just saying God will do it you proclaim under the influence of the anointing and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn he says to give them to give them beauty for ashes he says the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise listen for the spirit of heaviness he says that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified The power of God upon your life understand why you put this conference let it not just be a name and a ritual let it not just be understood by the leaders alone I show you the necessity of spiritual power are we together it is true John chapter 1 6 to 7 we're going to pray Mighty God. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, hearts always hunger for. Our hearts always hunger for Oh, our hearts always hunger for There was a man Not sent from Zechariah Not sent from Elizabeth Listen carefully You thought you were a Kogi person. No. Your body needed to have a geographic identification. So the body comes from Kogi state. But the man is sent from God. Not sent by the intimacy of a father and a mother. Listen very carefully. There was a man sent from God. When that man arrived the earth, they gave him a physical name to disguise that mystery that just came to the earth. And the name that was given was John. Next verse. The Bible says the same came. Stop. When you read everything about John, he just looks like a child that was born. But the Bible says he came. That means there are people who are not just born. They came. They came to families. They were supposed to stop at child number two. But prophecy made them come. They came. There was a man sent from God. His name was you. Sent. Listen carefully. You have to understand this. He was born into a family in Kogi state. Or in Nigeria. But the Bible says the same came for what? Please look at it. Read it. He came for... Did they ever call John a witness in the Bible? Did you ever hear any human being say witness John? No. He was called prophet John. He was called Baptist John. Correct? But the Bible says he came for a witness. 
In other words, baptism was a strategy. Prophecy was the geography of his witness. John was not just a prophet. John was not just a Baptist. John was a witness. That means you are not just a student. Listen. That means you are not just a young man trying to make ends meet. Don't let your academics confuse you. Don't let your family confuse you. Don't let your skin color and your name confuse you. God is revealing you to you that you were sent as a witness. That when your grandfather was crying and said, Lord, I don't know you so much, but is this how we will continue? God had his prayer and you were sent. You look like a fragile baby that came and now is passing through the 6334 system to fulfill all righteousness. But let me tell you, more than this body, you are sent. And the Bible says you are sent to be a witness. I know you call yourself a prophet. I know you call yourself an apostle. You call yourself a business person, a career person. You are right. But now you are wrong. Because your assignment is a witness. To bear witness of the light. He says that men through the witness that he will bear might believe. That means that there is a validation of God that creation is waiting for through my life. There is a dimension of correction about the perception of God that my lifetime should produce. There is something about God that is as yet a contention that God sent you to correct. Can anything good come out of this family? And God says, son... Come to this family and show them that God is able to pick a man from the dunghill. So you just showed up as a young man. And God says, remember, remember, remember. I know you are reading agri, but remember, you came as a witness. There is a point to prove. I've given you a lifetime to make a statement that will correct something about man's understanding of me. For instance, if this precious lady is barren, look at this. Just an example. Do you really think Satan is interested in children? No. What, what is the barrenness about? The barrenness is not, it's not about lack of a child. It's a statement. Satan is using her womb to make a statement to creation about God, like a loudspeaker. See the God you call faithful. See the God you call great. See the God you say is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. And mankind will say, God, we are beginning to doubt you. And God says, where are they? Where are they? My reputation is under threat. Where are they? And while he's asking you to come, you are refusing to grow spiritually. So you are delaying this. Your destiny has been allocated to answer this question. But you got born again late. And you are not even interested in spiritual growth. And while that delay is happening, someone is suffering from it. And the name of Christ is about to be reproached. But I'm glad there are people from this conference. And suddenly you show up. Ah, are you not studying bizard mean? Say no. Bizard mean is only a disguise. Like a terrorist studying medicine. He's not a doctor. He's a terrorist. He's only studying medicine to give him access to the space. Don't you know you are like a terrorist? They do not know. He says, he says now it does not yet appear. Yeah. God concealed you. He used everything about your life to shroud you like Moses so that you would not be destroyed in Egypt. And so as it is, creation does not yet know what you will become. There is a formation happening. But they think you are just an elder brother. They think you are just a nice lady that likes prayer. Wow, this lady likes prayer. Until God is done with you. And they'll say, so this is what we kept in our house. I thought we kept the third born in our house. You come to this lady now and say, My dear, 
do you believe God is love? She says, yes, but I'm frustrated. I'm about to go to a harbor leash. And he said, no, 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 there's no point. God has sent me. Usually she will laugh. He has sent me to prove to you he still loves you. Say, but if he still loves you, where is the evidence? Say, now I receive power. The enablement to correct, to demonstrate, to validate. And with just one touch, she will not only have a child, she will have triplets. Listen, it's not about children, it's a statement. Those are not children. Those are scriptures. Whoever comes to that house and looks at those children will not look at human beings. He's looking at a verse of scripture. I will restore the years that the canker worm has eaten. So the Bible says, let me tie it up, let's pray. It says, for I reckon, Romans chapter 8 and verse 18, I reckon, the word reckon means I come to terms with the fact that the sufferings of this present time, listen very carefully, is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in you. That means on your path to accessing the anointing, there are constraints. You will fast, you will pray, you will make mistakes. Your surrender will make you look like you are stupid. And Paul is giving you a word of hope. He says, I, I agree. I come to terms with the fact that this thing is a sacrifice. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, the constraints of waking up in the morning to pray, the constraints of staying when others are going, the constraints of hearing his voice before you move, he said, it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be in you. Then 19 says, for the endless expectation. Everybody say expectation. That means God told creation, wait, some people are coming. And they have been saying, we are waiting. We are waiting. Expectation. I told you I will give you 1,000. Wait for me here. And you've been waiting. Once it's 12 o'clock, you'll begin to get a little impatient. And creation is crying back to God and saying, Lord, how long? And God is replying you, how long? How long do you want them to wait? How long do you want your family to wait? How long do you want the destinies tied to you to wait? How long do you want the graces connected to you to wait? How long do you want those who are waiting for the prophetic word through your mouth to wait? How long do you want those who are appointed for death? For the NS expectation of creation, the Bible says, awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. One of the versions says that creation is waiting for God to reveal those who his sons truly are. So that where you are, God is. Now it's true that God is everywhere through his spirit. But he sends men to be extensions of his possibilities within territories. That means that when someone says, is there God in Kogi State? You speak like Elijah. And you speak also like Elisha. Tell Naaman to come and let him know there is a prophet in Israel. That because of your presence on your campus, every time darkness seems to come, you stand like a pillar. And say where to? I represent the government of heaven. And this is the token. There is an ability that was given to me. My brothers and my sisters listen to me. I prepare your heart this morning for the evening. We are going to pray. I'm showing you the necessity and the purpose for spiritual power. It is not all about ministry. It takes the power of God to subdue the darkness that plague men. It takes the power of God to bend any possibility that you see in this kingdom. It takes the power of God to correct men's destinies. It takes the power of God to force the purposes of God to advance within a life and within a territory. And I'm glad to tell you that in the name of Jesus, 
within this conference you must carry something like Saul when he met with Samuel he says he will go to the garrison of the Philistines and then he will begin to prophesy like them they saw him and they said he saw also one of them they know that as at last week you were just an ordinary believer who loved God what suddenly happened in one week that your life has changed you shook me yesterday and things changed in my life sorry where did you go to and you tell them there was a program over the weekend I innocently came and sat down and I didn't know that it was the voice of destiny calling to say it's time to rise to that level of power it's time to rise to that level of grace it's time to not only hear stories of the things that used to happen it's time to not only read God's generals but become an extension the book did not finish how could it finish the book left your own empty page there this is one of the reasons why the Lord brought me here by the Spirit of God to stir up our hearts and to call a solemn assembly of men and women who are truly desirous not just of power vaguely but to see the possibilities of God find expression on your campus in this land you see if you love God and you love people you will desire the power of God because darkness covers the earth look at your family left and right do you not discern that their cries are like the cries of Egypt over Moses Lord, when will things change? And God is saying, Son, they are asking you, not me. Because I have allocated their breakthrough to your grace. But you are yet to rise. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that will turn you into a sign and a wonder. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that will bring the end to every argument every doubt whether you're a man of God or not can end in a moment that there is something God will place upon your life and that would be it there was a great man called Apostle Babalola many of you know his story you read about how that man was accepted among the company of ministers for a long time there was prophecy that a man was going to arise and they had discerned that he was the one but they refused to receive him into their company it didn't make sense he was too ordinary and they said no there has to be an evidence that convinces us that this is the man who represents the face of god's power for his generation and then one day according to the story that a madman meandered and was running around and the group of people were in prayer and they looked through the window and watched that madman come towards Apostle Babalola and he held the madman and said you are not mad and the man came down there and when the company of the prophets saw they said truly truly was that not how they knew that the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha when they saw the possibilities that happened they said, ah, no, something has happened. The same way my brothers and my sisters, they will see something about your life and your roommate will say, wait, did you sit on this chair? Because when you left and I sat down, I don't know what happened. I fell asleep and all of a sudden, I started seeing things about my destiny. And he said, I was not even praying. I only sat. No, you were a distributor of spiritual possibilities. You brought something to that room. So we are going to pray this morning. And ask the Lord to prepare our hearts. We have woken up early in the morning to pray. Still an extension of the conference. I am a witness. Although a pastor. I am a witness. Although a student. I am a witness, although a lady. Everyone say, I am a witness. Never forget this word for the rest of your life. Yes. A witness is a validator. A validator. A validator. Please remember. That means that everywhere you see God's name 
about to be reproached something is calling you there like a politician if you see someone carrying the flag the flag of your party whether you are contesting you say why there is a solidarity a witness some of you even from this morning you will call your loved ones to say prepare the answer is coming and they say what are you saying i thought you would say send me some money i'm broke you say mommy i know you think i'm joking i always call but listen something is coming from heaven god is finally about to wipe the tears of this family that's why we travel from region to region to challenge believers that you are witnesses not just a man of god but everybody and that god and creation is counting on your validation of god's name the name of god is in jeopardy waiting for you to correct that perception first from your family then extended to people around you somebody is about to be thrown out of school now not because he is dull but there is a spirit that has taken advantage of everybody in his family they told you about it the last time and what you said is hey yeah and God is saying, not so, not after this conference. You go back and say, my brother, what did you say used to happen to you again? He said, I thought you we sympathize, we cried. He said, no, I've not come to sympathize. It takes the anointing to comfort those who mourn. And let me show you what comfort means. Comfort does not mean to just pass you through. Comfort means to change it. Someone has written why ten times, done everything to do. And then you tell the person in the name of Jesus, as touching this kingdom that I represent, I move you. Say, what stupid statement. Until his result comes out. And he said, this is not my result. Yeah, of course it's not your result. Of course it's not your result. This is God speaking through you. That I am still God. Is there someone here who sincerely is ready to say, Lord, in my time and in my generation, I will not fail you. If you are searching for witnesses. I thought I was just the last born. I thought I was just the first born. But I'm tired of just being an ordinary person. They call me pastor. But there is no evidence. And talk to the Lord. This is the conference that makes my life. Lord, I've attended several conferences. I have even organized others myself. But this time around, I'm not carried away. My spirit is open. There has to be an evidence upon my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 51 and verse 20. We're still praying. Jeremiah 51 
if it can be projected that will be fine but he said thou art my battle axe he didn't say you have it you are it thou art my battle axe and weapons of war he says for with thee i will break into pieces the nations and with you i will destroy kingdoms very important Zechariah chapter 1, please. And verse 19. We are praying. Zechariah chapter 1. And he said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? And he answered, These are horns. A horn is a symbol of authority. These horns have scattered Judah. They have scattered Israel. They have scattered Jerusalem. Next verse. The next verse. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. 21. And said, What come these to do? The horns now. And he spake saying, These are horns which have scattered Judah. Read on with me. So that no man did lift up his head. Listen. There are horns, my brothers and my sisters, that sit upon lives and families and destinies. They, they draw a line and said, nobody rises. He says, but these carpenters have come. The word phrase, the word to terrorize them, to cast out the horns of the Gentiles, which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. It takes power to bring darkness at bay. It takes power. It says, Behold, I give you power. Luke 10, 19. It's the word exousia, authority. I delegate you to tread upon snakes and scorpions, he says. And over every power of the enemy. Is someone ready to pray? And you are going to declare and pray. And say, Father, I am contacting grace. That will grant me the ability to wrought terrible things in righteousness. On behalf of my life, my family. The power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. Please pray. chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 I'm rounding up now 2 Peter chapter 1 Apostle Peter is teaching us something very powerful he says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ read verse 3 if you are a Christian 1, 2, read 
Stop. 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 Don't rush. What is the agency that makes all things possible? His divine power. Not according to faith. Your faith is only a connector. The agency, the force that grants things unto men, even the things that pertain to life and godliness, is called his divine power. The agency that prospers is his divine power. The agency that moves a man is his divine power. That means if that divine power is absent in your life, you cannot access all things that pertain unto life and godliness. His divine power. Hmm. Lifting you in ministry. His divine power. Bringing favor. His divine power. Turning every negative prophecy around. His divine power. Elijah was a man of like passion. He provoked the divine power of God. And shut the heavens for a space of three and a half years. Repeated the same thing to open the heavens. His divine power. Let me tell you this. It is not an act of flesh and carnality. Provided your motive has been adjusted. To cry for a genuine manifestation of the power of God upon your life. In a dimension. I will teach you certain things about the anointing tonight. Before the impartation that will change your life. And one of it. Let me just give you an understanding. We are wrapping up. Is that you see the power of God is in levels and is in measures. Listen carefully. And... It is only the challenge that is within the level of the power of God that you can dispel, that can be solved. Listen carefully. That means, come sir, look at this gentleman. Let's assume this gentleman has delay in his life. Let's assume this gentleman has the spirit of death attempting to oppress him. And let's assume that this gentleman has something wrong with his organs. And let's assume this gentleman is not doing well academically. And let's also assume this gentleman is not doing well financially. I've listed a number of issues, isn't it? I pray for this as a man of God. He may even fall down. But you see, every challenge that he has is like an item in the store. There is a level of anointing required to solve it. So, as the anointing goes through his body, the limitation of the anointing I carry, the anointing I carry, for instance, if it can only solve academic problems, he will fall and stand up and have only testimonies in the academics. That means that the remaining part of his life, there was limitation. Are you seeing that now? You know your level of anointing by the testimonies that keep recycling around your life. When certain dimensions have not been captured, it means the grace is not there. Period. So when you really love this brother, you must rise to a level of anointing where every challenge that he comes is within your grace to solve. And one prayer, just a tap on the head, he may think is a joke until he goes back and finds out that all doors have opened. And he says, what kind of grace is this? How God anointed Jesus. Are you seeing now? Not only that he was anointed, he was so anointed that regardless of what your issue were, if you came to him, it was child's play. You are going to cry. Some of you have tasted of the anointing. Lord, multiply this grace upon my life to a level and a degree. Multiply.
Aleluya. 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 Let's follow on. And so it is important that we understand. You don't have to bring them out, just, just leave them. The time will come when we bring them out. But that the underlying motif, please look up everyone. There is, I'm not sure that we've had more prayer warriors, I may be wrong, arguably, than we have in our generation today. And like I observed yesterday, that more than our spiritual activities, please listen carefully, it is important that the underlying motif that governs everything we do it should be to see his glory revealed and to see his kingdom come john 17 and verse 1 jesus is praying and he says father the hour has come he says glorify now thy son that thy son may glorify you jesus said and i if i be lifted up from the earth he says, I will draw all men to myself. So yesterday, God took our time to prune our motives, to cause us to love him. Very quickly, I'll just proceed um, so that we'll have, would not take too much time. Number two, the second key that I'd like to teach us tonight is the power of spiritual illumination. The power of spiritual illumination that there are dimensions of the power the glory and the possibilities of god that you cannot host in your life and for a generation until you attain a requisite level of spiritual illumination you have to understand this this is a realm that is governed by light it's a realm that is governed by the strength of your illumination is praise the lord light is powerful are we together everybody say illumination habakkuk chapter 3 please if it can be projected habakkuk chapter 3 verse 4 i wish we could get the amplified version but if we're unable to get the amplified version, that's all right. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4. It says, And his brightness was as the light. And then it says, And he had horns. A horn is a symbol of authority coming out of his hand and amplified says and there in that light was the hiding place of his power God's power has a spiritual location that the light that emanates from him is the hiding place he hides his power in light that means that the degree to which you access spiritual illumination is also the degree to which your life can be a demonstration of the possibilities that reside in the Christ. Please listen carefully. This is a realm where ignorance is costly. In Psalm 82 and verse 5, the Bible says, They know not. Write it down, please. Neither will they understand. It says, They walk on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, Have I not said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High? Then verse 7 says, But you shall die like mere men, and fall like one of these princes. It is important to be equipped with knowledge. It is important to be equipped with the requisite level of spiritual illumination. It is true that the Zoe life, the life of God, is a compendium of all the possibilities that reside in the Christ. But they are activated through knowledge and understanding. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 18 it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them 
it matters that we walk as people of light 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 this is a kingdom where light reigns dominion is not an impartation is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries and the ways of God the result of that understanding is dominion Paul was praying and crying on behalf of the church in Ephesus chapter 1 then he said that the eyes of your understanding he says be enlightened flooded with light that you may know the word know there does not just mean to be aware is the same word that is used in context of marriage a man knowing his wife and you've always heard me say this when you know God there should be an effect I, I apologize if I sound vulgar we're adults here when a man gets married to his wife and he meets with his wife something begins to change in her life she begins to be pregnant is that true and nine months she gives birth to a child that child is a testament the seal of their oneness so if you as the bride of Christ claim intimacy show me at least the pregnancy if you cannot show me the child that is a product of your intimacy with this faithful husband let me see the formation of that spiritual pregnancy that you can carry something that is for a generation illumination there's a lot of useless knowledge in the body of Christ just because they are spiritual or they are scarce in terms of their distribution does not mean they are applicable within the context of our growth listen to me let me teach you something the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 please follow me the Bible says he led captivity captive and then he gave gifts unto men the gifts are men not talent he gave men to men are we together he gave men called gifts to men and the Bible says some apostles and prophets and evangelists pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints these gifts were sent by God to mature the body are we together so that the body now being matured will do the work of the ministry are you getting what I'm saying now so the ministry is for the body the gifts prepare the body for the ministry and the ministry is that they advance the frontiers of the kingdom the purposes of the kingdom in doing that listen very carefully the Bible lets us know that the formation of the church it was built with an exact spiritual formula number one Christ being the chief cornerstone everybody say chief cornerstone he says there is no other foundation that can be laid except Christ are we Bible students immediately after that chief cornerstone the Bible says there are two mysterious foundations called the foundations of the apostles and the prophets look at the spiritual formation this is how it was built and if your growth pattern does not follow that formula something will be aberrated in your growth that when you meet Christ the next ministries to meet is the apostolic and the prophetic it's a foundation why is it necessary to encounter these dimensions I will tell you listen the knowledge of God is dispensational everybody say dispensational that means for every dispensation there is a spiritual curriculum there is an allocation of a dimension of God that he seeks to be known within the lifespan of that dispensation and it is the office of the apostolic and the prophetic that through the sacrifice of alignment they are able to capture the body of knowledge allocated for a generation when you read the Bible you will see a revelation of God it was written now as a story but I hope you know that all those revelations were captured per dispensation when Abraham came he showed us a dimension Isaac came Jacob came are we together now it is the compendium of these dispensations about God we call them the names of God the names of God written in the Bible is not the only names he has there are still other names our generation should provide a name that our children should know if all if our children cannot know God by a name that represents his dealings with our generation we fail I don't know if you understand what I'm saying so 
the apostolic and the prophetic by the Spirit of God have been mandated. You see, let me tell you, the truest proof of the prophetic and the apostolic is not just miracles. It's not just signs and wonders and prophetic utterances in terms of word of knowledge and the speakings of the Spirit. The hallmark of the apostolic ministry is the ability to align in a way and manner that allows you to capture the full scope of the program of God as allocated to a generation. To understand it and to dispense it accurately. We owe our generation a revelation of God that will sponsor the revival that we so talk about. But this has been vested upon the shoulders of certain people. We need light. Everybody say light. What happens in the body of Christ is largely a recycling of information just by watching videos and messages. And that's very important. But there is a dimension of depth that must be a testament of your personal pursuit of God. There are things that you must know about God. It says, for I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. Illumination is very important. You must know what to do. Job chapter 38. Popular scripture. Job was a man of depth. He was a man of wisdom. Just give us 38. But when you read from chapter 29, Job began to speak and say, In the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord, everybody says secrets of the Lord. Not everything in this kingdom is public. There are secrets. The Bible says the secrets of God is with them that fear him. The word Yirat Adonai, the fear of the Lord. He says, and he will show them his covenants. That God can bring a man like an initiation into a realm to say, see, I show you the workings of the spirit. So Job was a man of great spiritual depth. Verse 33 of 38, Job was frustrated. And then God comes to him and the question that God is asking him is what he's asking us tonight. Read with me if you're a Christian. One, two, read. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? That's question one. Question two says, Can't thou set the dominion thereof upon the earth? This is God asking a man. Do you know the system, the modus operandi of the heavens? Do you know the formula by which heaven regulates its activities? That God has never had to get up from his throne to judge iniquity, yet sin cannot live in heaven. Right from his throne, the entire activity of heaven is coordinated. Knowest thou the ordinances? And that if you know that formula, can you reproduce it in the earth realm? Do you know the ordinances of heaven? And can you establish the dominion thereof? Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, please listen. Behind every result in the kingdom, there is a mystery that connects it. The kingdom is a compendium of infinite possibilities. But every dimension is governed by an exact body of truth. So in your lifetime it is possible to never come into the reality of certain levels of kingdom experience. That does not mean those provisions are not there. It means the requisite level of illumination that will grant you access to that realm is not there. Paul says, I went up by revelation. I went up by revelation. There is something about God that when you know, it can grant you access to host superior dimensions of his presence. There is something about God when you know, it will cause his love in and through you to be made manifest in a richer dimension. The question is what dimension of the power of God is being short-circuited in your life on account of no knowledge, limited knowledge, or inaccurate knowledge. Because it is possible to access knowledge, but knowledge that is not true and is not applicable within the context of God's dealings in a generation. 
I don't know if you are following me. It's very important. Much more than surrender and sacrifice. We need to cry for knowledge. We need to cry for illumination. As chapter 20 and verse 32, Paul is speaking and he says, I commend you to God. I hand you over to God and to the word of his grace, he says. He says, it is able to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul is teaching the church in Colossae, mentoring them, part of his apostolic ministry. And he began to cry that they be filled with three dimensions of the workings of God. Number one, he says that they be filled with the knowledge of his will. Number two, that they be filled with wisdom, all wisdom. Number three, that they be filled with spiritual understanding. We rule in this kingdom by light. We reign in this kingdom by light. Our possibilities are not just a function of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. It is not even just a function of our being born again. The dimensions of light that we access and understand and engage. Listen, let me tell you this. Satan has never been afraid of the word of God. You know a lot of people say Satan is afraid of the word of God. There's nowhere in the Bible that records that. No. Do you know Satan's office before he fell? Satan was the librarian of heaven. He was the custodian of the mysteries of God. That was his office. The light bearer. It was on account of that that he believed that all he had was all of God. And so he had the authorization to believe that he could run a parallel government. Satan did not want to replace God. No. He wanted you to choose God or him. The idea was not to replace God. I will be like the Most High, he said. That means you can choose. Let there be two thrones in heaven. So that you can choose God or you choose me. And there was judgment. So Satan has never been afraid of light. In the parable of the sower, who came and carried the seed? Remember the seed is the word of God. Who came? Satan. He carried the word of God and was not shaken. When Jesus finished fasting as the living logos of the Father, filled with the Holy Spirit plus fasting, guess the first person he saw? Satan. Satan comes to the world full of the spirit with fasting on top and he's not shaking and he holds Jesus the word and says come let me take you to a mountain <laughs> there's been a lot of error Satan has never been afraid of the word let me tell you what he's afraid of he's afraid of the reaction of a man engaging the word the integrity of God is only committed at the point of obedience Having the readiness to judge all disobedience when and if your obedience is complete. Are we together? Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like menorah. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord. Like I can do. Light it was Elihu that said, but there is a spirit in man. It's an information. But the spirit in man is useless until the illumination, the breath of the Almighty comes and quickens him. In Isaiah 11, the entire sevenfold manifestation of the Holy Spirit is to one goal, to make him of weak understanding. That this dimension synergize and coordinate themselves together to the end that that believer be of weak understanding. Understanding. There are certain classes 
of a, a class of demonic cadre called rulers of darkness. Everybody say rulers of darkness. That means their dominion starts anywhere there is ignorance. When they come into a domain, the moment they see ignorance, their dominion starts. So the prophet saw by the spirit that they that sat in darkness have seen a great light. A great light. That's what is happening to someone here. That's what is happening to a ministry, a man of God, that the bread, the hallowed bread of the spirit is being broken, that your eyes will see. Was it not two men in Emmaus that came and were walking with Jesus, having resurrected? They were walking with him that, and they did not know him. Proximity with the word does not mean you have revelation. You can be around it for a long time. Be a Bible study coordinator. Be a pastor. Be the spiritual leader in terms. And just because you are accurate in your theological exegesis, which is important, it does not mean you have revelation. There are dimensions of truth that cannot be studied. They are given. Your assignment cannot be to study it. Your assignment is to align and wait. And then it comes. On the fifth day of the tenth month, the word of the Lord came. We need light. We need light. We have a lot of knowledge and intellectual enlightenment. They may be spiritual in context. And we piece all this knowledge together and make a lot of boasting. That on, on the strength of the scarceness of the information we have, many times we flatter ourselves into believing that just because we have certain levels of scarce knowledge, the fact that it is spiritual does not mean it was inspired of God. The spirit realm is a realm. And the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit there. And any spirit there is higher than the dimension of man. So it can supply a level of information. There was an information that was captured in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was closed and locked. It was not supposed to be revealed. It matters that we know that we trust God to have discernment like the sons of Issachar in this season. And that we can read the writings of the world and know what God is doing. Because where his word is, that's where his power is. His power follows his word, not just generically speaking. Let him that has an ear, he says, hear what the Spirit saith. That means not everybody has that kind of ear. Your Spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. When I had my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, listen. I was lying down on the floor when he came to me. You've heard my encounter. Didn't say a word to me. Yet I was understanding. That was when I realized that in the realm of the spirit, you don't have to talk to speak. No. That spiritual communications are governed by light, not sound. Sound is a borrowed phenomenon that is used in the earth realm. But the language of God is light. He was talking to me and yet speaking and not talking. And then he stretched his hands and light at his brilliance entered me. I didn't realize what that was. I just thought it was just, okay, wonderful. At the end of that encounter, when I opened my Bible, 
it was as if a line was drawn from Genesis to Revelation. What is this? What is this? You've heard my encounters. That there are times that I would lie down and wake up with my Bible open to scriptures. And I would see it. The Lord showing you things. He says, open down my eyes. My brothers and my sisters, hear me. This is not a storybook. This is not a novel. It takes more than zeal to see what is here. Everything here is sealed. No level of intelligence can unlock the scroll that locks this. You can open the book, yet it is sealed. It will take the Spirit of God to open for you the seven scrolls and the seals. It says, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scrolls. Then the elder tapped me and said, weep not. He says, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb of God, the root of Jesse, David, had prevailed. Then I looked upon a throne and I no longer saw a lion. I saw a lamb as though had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes. Horns speak of authority, the eyes speak of revelation. For every horn there was an eye to it. For every dimension of power there was light to it. In one of the visions that the Lord showed me, I was standing somewhere. I share this thing with you because I want to inspire a generation to love God and to follow the patterns that bring true spiritual power. I was standing in a vision and all of a sudden I saw a great door. Giant ancient door. And then I came closer to the door by the Spirit. And I found out that the door was made of other doors too. It was a big door. But every one of that door was made of little doors. And I noticed they were opening and closing. All of them at random. Opening and closing. And every time they opened, light came out. Light came out. And I was wondering what kind of vision this was. Then the Spirit of the Lord ministered to me that this is the dynamics of transformation by the Word. That every dimension of Scripture has a level of light, grace, and power behind it. So every time you catch the revelation, the door is open and the light equivalent to demonstrate the truthfulness of that revelation is given to you. Meaning that no matter how you teach a truth, if you cannot demonstrate it, you've not caught it. I write these things to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Our generation is too in a hurry to speak. We need to reduce our talking time and stay back in the secret and get the substance of the things we propose so that we do not become like the fig tree that had green leaves with no fruit. But you cannot do it on your own. That's why you have to trust the Spirit of God. Hmm. That's why he wrote the song. I cannot run this race alone Unless you take over I cannot do it on my own Jesus take over Take over Jesus, take over. I cannot see it on my own. Unless you take over. I cannot hear it by myself. Jesus, take over. Take over. Take over. Take over, take over. How will I see it by myself? Unless you take over. How can I see the keys to power? How can I see the keys to increase? How do I understand the path of the anointing? Was it not Job that said there is a path which no fowl knoweth? The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. I cannot see it on my own Unless you take over Take over Take over I cannot see it on my own 
cannot pray it on my own. Was it not written in the Bible? That for we know not what to, how do you pray for power? How much do you know about it? Jesus, take over. Take over. I cannot see it on my own. Are you ready, friends? I'm seeing the vision of a boiling pot. I know that God is about to do something here. You will never be the same. Listen, man of God, I challenge you, those in ministry. Please, let's reduce the time we spend roaming around and making a lot of noise to get back to the secret place. If a major part of you is seen by men, you are cheap. Listen, listen, listen. Everything glorious is veiled in the kingdom. The veil is proof of worth. When in Jewish days, when you came to take a wife, as soon as she saw you, she would veil herself. If a major part of your life is seen by all, you are weak. Salabandos Number three, you have to find someone and tie this. The third key to spiritual power. Please let me have your attention now. Outside, inside, please be sensitive and be opened. Is the mystery of impartation. The mystery of impartation. Mighty God. Chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, please. Paul is speaking to the church in Philippi. Listen carefully and understand the construction of what he's saying. Please, can you give it to us? Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7. He said, let me just quote it quickly so we save time. That ye all are partakers. Please listen. Partakers of my grace. I want to teach you something very deep in the spirit now. Please open your eyes and understand what I want to teach you. There are three platforms for receiving the power of God. Please listen. Please listen. Number one is called encounters. An encounter is the first spiritual platform provided wherein there is an exchange of power from God to a man. In Genesis 32, the second time God will be visiting Jacob. The first time he came in chapter 28 and Jacob was not sensitive. Please listen. And then he comes back in chapter 32. Now Jacob had dismissed his wife. Dismiss everybody. The Bible says when he was alone, listen carefully, then a man came to him and the rest who began. It was in the night. And then he said, lead me for the day breaking. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Now watch how he blessed him. What is your name? What is your name? And he said, Jacob. He says, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob. For as a prince, you have had power with God and has prevailed. He says that you will be called Israel. Listen. And then he touched the hollow of his thigh. Let me explain to you what that means. Please, you don't have to fight and quarrel outside. I don't know how you are going to have to manage them. 
you don't have to fight please you don't have to even bring those under the anointing can someone please guide them there don't worry those who are under the anointing just leave them outside there if you pick them there would there would be a lot of chaos again those under the anointing just help them create space for them outside there you don't have to bring them yet we're going to pray shortly listen let me have your attention please so jacob is with god and he's saying i want power and god looks at him and says i don't give power to strong people jacob there's no weakness in your life so my power cannot be evident i will have to touch something in you that will make my power relevant when god comes to you and finds you strong he goes back his power searches for weakness my grace my i i win out bible students please <laughs> let me show you a mystery when you want God's power he takes yours first he doesn't add to yours so that the excellency of power may be of God so at no point will you confuse that that your power and his fight just a mix Lord a little of your power no he said Jacob I see strength and stability even without me you cannot host my power that way let me keep you dependent I will tilt you to assume a dimension where you can be whole again my power becomes your completion that's what happens to him encounters encounters are powerful where a dimension listen an encounter is a supernatural experience that furnishes the reality of a thing or a person or a dimension to you it doesn't have to be visionary but it must be supernatural encounters number two let's hurry up there is a dimension of god that is invested in his laws and principles listen very carefully there are principles and keys of the kingdom you do not need God's direct authorization to access His power. It's been pre-programmed in them. An example are the laws that we engage on earth. Even if an armed robber plans, it will grow. The power of God has been invested on that law. You don't need to know God to access that level of His power. This is the dimension that is being manipulated by principalities and powers. Every power, including that which is used by witches and wizards, is God's power. The devil has no power. It was manipulated and aberrated. Once have I spoken, and twice have you heard. Talk to me. All power. Jesus said, I am the door. That means I am the authorized access point. He didn't say I'm the only way. He said I am the way. A window is a way. It's an unauthorized way. A visitor does not enter a house through the window. But a thief can enter through the window. So the powers that be through sorcery and the manipulation of the stars and all of that, they can conjure spiritual realities and manipulate certain dimensions of power. But that does not mean that it is authorized by God. The Spirit of God is the only one who can cause any power dispensed to bring glory to God. Principles. Everybody say principles. There are principles that have been embedded and the power and the integrity of God backs them. When you believe in those principles and you engage them, then you will see certain dimensions of the power of God. Don't forget number one, encounters. Number two, principles. The third dimension is what I want you to listen to now. The third dimension or third platform for accessing spiritual power is through alignment with a man who has a covenant with God that authorizes God to reveal his power in a certain dimension please listen carefully no matter how you know God and serve God there are certain dimensions you can never get yourself please understand this I want to teach you something now Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 8. It's a scripture we read all the time, but I pray that God will open our eyes to see. Let me quote it very quickly. 
it says he sent a word to Jacob and it lighted upon Israel that means every time God sees Jacob and deals with Jacob it is because he wants to reach Israel listen carefully spiritual growth is not based on covenant understand this spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant let me teach you this please listen that means that my personal spiritual growth with God is not based on a covenant however the advancement of the frontiers of the kingdom is based on covenant and that means there is a system come my friend let me use you please look up look at this gentleman there is a way God works on earth and there is a way that anointings and graces are distributed on earth let me show you the protocol of spiritual power that means that for every generation there are some God finds a man everybody say a man and enters a personal covenant with that man not old and new testament a personal covenant with that individual that becomes the authorized platform for his releasing that power now when this happens the sacrifice that that man went through to allow him to be able to host that dimension of God will give him a level of accreditation. No man in that dispensation will step into this dimension ignoring this man. You can love God and fast alone, but when you ignore this man, when God loves you, he will refer you back to the authorized system he has placed. Please listen. Let me show you a mystery. How can we see by ourselves unless you take over? I have tried it on my own. Jesus, take over. I truly fasted on my own. But Jesus, take over. Let me speak to you, and I tell you this with all humility. I don't claim to know everything in the kingdom. I am only an effective member of the body. I have also gleaned from the wisdom scattered in the body. But this that I teach you is not a revelation. It's an office. So on earth today, the covenant that represents the spirit of faith on earth is resting upon a man who may look very childish and weak called Kenneth Copeland. Pick from anywhere in the world, whoever must manifest faith at a global level must not only align to God but must also submit to the reality that this grace carries please listen listen this world is the world of men if you know God alone you will not succeed I know that we say God I will know you alone you are right in terms of the fact that but I'm giving you the dynamics of the operation of the kingdom God wants to ordain David as king because he's tired of Saul. Samuel stands in between and refuses. And David is suffering in the wilderness. God has agreed to move a man. A man refuses and another man's destiny is suffering. And God would have said, Samuel, I will punish you. But he was the authorized system for impartation and transference. God could not ignore him. He had to come and plead with him. How long will you weep, Samuel? Seeing that I've rejected Saul as king, go to the house of Jesse. You are delaying a man. Was he the only prophet? I show you a mystery. The arrogance of our generation is why many people can never enter superior dimensions of the anointing. I will show you it is not human worship but there might be something we have been missing if god connects that missing link and we pray 
my assignment is done. Are we together? Listen very carefully. Until Jesus came, the authorized channel for accessing the was John. John the Baptist, who you call John the prophet. Is that true? Because the, the organogram of the move of God is that every time Jesus is about to show up, Elijah must show up first. Elijah is not a man. Elijah is a spiritual prophetic system that foreruns every move of God. The first manifestation of Elijah started with Noah. <laughs> Listen, you see bodies on earth, but these bodies are hosting ancient mantles. Listen to me. If all you see are human bodies, you will miss something quickly. How can I see it on my own? Unless you take over. Was that not what the Ethiopian Enoch said? How shall I see except some man teach me? Listen. So Jesus is walking on earth as the Son of God, but his heaven remained closed for 30 years. Jesus, your Jesus, the Word became flesh. The logos of God could not open his own heavens. Keep quiet. Watch this. Until he found out the man who represented the voice of God. And when he came and met John, John sees him and says, Behold the Lamb. John could see that was Elijah because the Bible says before the great and terrible day of the Lord Malachi Elijah will always go forward it is every move of God will start with Elijah first before God comes the prophetic so Elijah comes in John and John looks at that 30, 30 year old body and sees the ancient of days in it and says behold the lamb and then he says mm -mm, me too have longed for your coming so that i can receive this jesus made a statement we must learn suffer it to be so this is an ordinance it cannot change john my heavens will remain closed and the father will never speak until i submit to what you represent you are not a man you are a system Listen, and then John dipped Jesus in water. The moment he came out, Bible students, what does the Bible say? And the heavens opened, and then God spoke. Now, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, pleased by his alignment. Therefore, as a transference has happened, hear ye. Jesus would have been surprised ignoring John. Are you learning what I'm saying? There are men who are not men. There are men who are storehouses. They host mysteries that sometimes they themselves do not even know. The Bible is a continuation of a story. It's only the actors that change. The story is a straight line. The same way Jezebel is not a woman, Jezebel is a system. Was she not the woman upon the horse that holds the blood of the Matthias? And that Jezebel is also a businesswoman. She can make the kings of the earth rich through her harlotry with them. Jezebel, the system. And Jezebel is also a prophet. It's in the Bible. She can prophesy. So Jezebel shows up. And Jezebel is a structure that always seeks authority and influence over a territory. The moment Jezebel comes, she wants to marry the king because she wants authority over a landmass. This is the character and the operation of this system called Jezebel. So Jezebel shows up and then becomes the wife of Ahab. And then Elijah 
God's system of restoration of God's patterns and order also shows up. Notice the fight was between two systems. Jezebel, Elijah. That's it. You will wonder why are two people fighting themselves like this? Are there not other people in the world? They knew what they were fighting. Jezebel was not there when Elijah was sending fire. But she vowed that she must take away his head. Now Elijah goes to heaven. And the body died. Fast forward the New Testament. Elijah returns back in John. Jezebel returns back in Herodias. The story continues. Now watch this. Remember her vow that she would take away Elijah's head. So when the little girl danced before the king. Sit down, sit down, sit down. When the little girl danced before the king. And the king asked her, what do you want? She had to go to that system, Jezebel. To say, what, what should we do? And she said, like I promised, I want the head. The system that restores men to God. Cut it off. Please sit down. How can I see it on my own? Unless you take over. How will I know it on my own? Unless you take over. Listen to me. Every mantle and every grace that ever came from heaven is still on earth. Mantles don't leave the earth. No. But the problem is where are they? I will show you. Listen. <laughs> there are three official storehouses for mantles. Number one, physical geographic territories. Physical geographic territories. The same way there are mineral resources. There are spiritual resources distributed territorially. That means Kogi state has a spiritual allocation that was given this state. Notice the kind of men of God that come out from this state. Notice their inclination to the prophetic. There is a mantle. It's not just a desire. Notice that all the men of God that come from the south and the west. Their dimension of the prophetic is largely not revelatory, it's creative, it's a grace. May God bless you and change your life, they will say, and you find out you'll come back with testimonies. They may not be able to give you word of knowledge, but they can creatively speak. It doesn't matter the church, it's a grace, like mineral resources. So the anointing is hosted in physical territories. Please believe this. Number two, the anointing is stored in spiritual institutions. Hmm. There are churches and institutions that as a corporate entity, they are storehouses of certain mantles on earth. Look at this. How many of you have observed that there are certain churches even before you know some principles you started getting the results just by going there huh? institutions was it not solomon who dedicated the temple and he prayed and said arise O god and come now to your resting place and there was a covenant with that physical spiritual structure that lord whoever looks at jerusalem this temple and prays hearken to it is that true he didn't say if he prays right provided his faith in that direction honor it and so when daniel was in babylon and they passed a decree and he knew that he could not take the risk of trusting his faith he opened the window towards Jerusalem to that temple and prayed and invoked the covenant of God's presence upon that place are we together? the last storehouse for the anointing is men 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 Elisha died of sickness and the man to remain in his bones they were passing a dead man and the dead man by mistake 
fell and rolled. No prayer, no fasting, no clashing of cymbal, no keyboard, no nothing. It just touched that bones. And all of a sudden, the man comes back to life. There are men today who are spiritual storehouses. When the Bible wants you to receive the grace for prayer, the man who exemplifies that dimension is Elijah. When God wants to lead you to the realm of encounters, the man who exemplifies that dimension is Jacob. Men as God's representatives of dimensions. Now listen, on earth today, please hear me, there are still men. When those who carry those graces die, God will find new people and reenact a covenant of continuity with them and his program continues. So when God wants to introduce certain graces to a territory, he knows the men who have these graces and he will find a way of taking them like the ark of God to those territories to introduce those Please listen, when you honor a man, you don't just honor revelation or sacrifice. Honor starts from discernment. Who is this man? When it was time for Elisha to receive, what was the requirement? Having followed from Bethel to Gilgal, down now to Jordan. Look at it. He says, if you can see me. Was he not looking at him? I hope you know that Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. Go and read your Bible. There's no prophecy that Elisha was supposed to. Elisha was a farmer. He just found interest in a man and said, This guy is not an ordinary man. This man, you, are, you look like you are a prophet, but you are more than a prophet. And he left all and began to pour water in him. As angry and temperous as Elijah was, Elisha said, No problem. Elijah had a school of prophets, meaning the next prophet should come out from that school. But they did not have the eyes to see. They could all prophesy because... Completely, they knew he would be taken to heaven. Not one person, corporately, they knew. They said, Do you know God is taking your master? That wicked man, that Elijah. We can prophesy, he can prophesy. We can heal, he can heal. What's the difference? But well, Elijah said, There is a difference. This man, <clears throat> a man that calls down fire, a man that does this and that, and he says, If you can see me, watch this. That means if you can discern what I represent. If you discern my systemic representation, that there is a system hidden in this body, you will receive it. And the moment he discerned, he saw chariots coming. Because it is appointed unto men to die once. So if a man doesn't die, he's not a man. He saw chariots coming from heaven. And he said, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof and something left Elijah and the moment the sons of the prophet saw it he went to the Jordan River listen not every man to can pass the Jordan even the Jordan knows so when Elisha held that mantle he said where is the Lord God of Elijah you will stand near that river for many years and then write a book that Jordan cannot be parted just because you tried. But when Jordan meets the mantle assigned to part it, every problem is relative. Relative to the grace and the mantle confronting it. Don't generalize problems. We're about to pray. Saul! So, Loses his donkey. Listen carefully. And after three days, they cannot find the donkey. And they said, look, let's go and look for it. 
after three days of frustration they said let's go back to our father kish so that he will not leave the issue of donkey and start thinking about us and they said no listen he said there is a holy man of god do you know how that man of god came through the prayer of a woman who had been barren for many years this is what satan was fighting satan was not fighting hannah satan was fighting samuel he was a voice a man whose word would not fall to the ground like god and he said there is a holy man of god let's go and meet him he would tell us watch this as soon as they get to the city gate they see this strange being called samuel and he looks at them a challenge they had suffered for three years he said forget about the issue of uh, restoration just climb up let me go and tell you what is in your heart that means every mountain is relative it's only a mountain because of the kind of grace you are carrying you will confront another grace that will trivialize that mountain overnight these are principles and then he looked at him and said is it not because the lord has anointed you to be king over israel he poured oil on him immediately somewhere looked at saul the donkey started going back home this was a man who looked for his own donkey for three days he didn't find it but he met another man just from eye contact the donkey started going back home Samuel had waited for Saul to come and offer sacrifices and Saul Samuel was wasting time and the people began to put pressure upon Saul what happened Saul offered the sacrifice as soon as he was done Samuel came are we not all men of God are we not all anointed didn't Jesus die for all of us so says an arrogant and an ignorant generation and then Samuel comes and meets Saul with the sacrifice done and says, oh dear Saul you have done foolishly you would have allowed me to come and do this thing and God would have established your throne forever it would have been the thou son of Saul have mercy on me Saul now that you have done this your kingdom is taken away from you please listen to me you have come tonight for an impartation an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities it's not just a transference of anointing our lives and our results are governed by what is upon us the grace upon you is what governs the possibilities around you everything on earth is obedient it just depends on the grace speaking to it and so when god wants chaos you he wants kogi state to step into certain dimensions by the privilege of the election of grace then he will send men men who by the sacrifice of alignment he has lifted them as pillars to represent certain dimensions of him to a generation you cannot ignore these men it's not pride you will ignore them to your own spiritual peril no matter what you know about god i started my journey as a believer loving the lord my grandfather is the first cooking president for those of you who know that denomination and so i come from a family a lineage of missionaries and people who love god but a time came when i started having very strange inexplainable encounters please listen very carefully I started seeing things and hearing things that I could not understand and explain. I asked a lot of men of God questions and they could not answer. And I said, what is this? The first day I took the book, God's General, 
when I opened that book, I started crying. It was as if I was reading about my family. I said, this is it. Something within me is a spiritual tribe. Like the nation of Israel arranged according to their tribes. I saw it. I have found a place. So this was the prompting. When I began to read about these people, I learned all of this. I was happy and passionate. A few years later, I would now begin to have encounters. Now please listen. Encounters must be guided by the word of God so that you don't dapple into all kinds of demonic metaphysical things. But I started having encounters with those you know and call to be God's generals. Some of them I never knew them. It was from those encounters I read and I said, oh, this is them. This is this, this is that. In one of the encounters, I met a man, average height. And he finished talking to me. I, I couldn't even remember what he was saying. And then I was crying and he was on his way going. And I just I said, sir, please, what is your name? And then he ignored me for a while. He moved and then he turned and said, Paul. Your apostle Paul. Though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. Listen. That though we are few, we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. I started searching for God's generals who were alive on earth to meet them. I wanted to meet them in their lifetime and receive these mantles before they would go. I only had the privilege of meeting a few of them. Sadly. I remember one of the men that I met. He began to tell me the story. And he said... One of the generals of faith looked at him and told him, he said, make sure you do not die with your mantle. He said, find young men who are faithful and let them carry this mantle before you go. Are we together now? Yes. And then he laid hands on Lester Suro. And then he laid hands on this man of God. And then he looked at me. And after he prayed and ministered to me, I searched for Charles and Francis Hunter, some of the greatest healing evangelists that this world had known. A hundred wheelchairs in a single meeting. Not, not the childish things we do here and make a lot of noise about. These were men who had gained mastery over spiritual things. I was to travel to the U.S. to go and scrub their toilet for two weeks. I was not going to preach as a man of God. I was going to go and drop that. You will never receive from a colleague. There must be a spiritual potential difference if you ever want to receive anything. I was going to scrub their toilets and God sees my heart. It was from the depth of my heart I was going to do it. Rain had bonked crowds of people. I was tired. I stood there for six hours. He prayed and preached the next day. Mighty miracles. I was already walking miracles. I was already seeing visions. I was already walking in superior dimensions of revelation. But I didn't go to that crusade ground as a colleague. I went as one in need of something that my generation will testify about. By the next day, I said, no, I must have this anointing. I can't just go there as a big man to receive. So I saw them wheeling people on wheelchairs. And I said, please, can I join? They said, no, 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 these people are trained. Um, I'm not in the committee. I said, what does that mean? Committee or not, I came here to receive. I must walk home. I said, they should allow me. 
while I was wheeling the people, the wheelchair to the front, I was praying. I said, Lord, this is how it will be in my own meetings too. I am honoring the systems you have put on earth. Stop fight to be so that all scripture may be fulfilled. I stood there. You've heard my story. A pregnant woman was standing next to me. We stood for six hours. Occasionally, the woman would be tired and have to lean on me. I was almost saying, Madam, this is not my child. I mean, we all came for this crusade. So, I mean, what is all this, this, this trouble you are giving me? But when you are desperate to carry something, even pain will not interrupt you. Listen, I set my eyes on Reinhard Bonke while he was preaching. His message, you know how it is, very simple. And for those of us that God has trusted with some revelation, you know the pride that comes with people that have depth. I mean, what is this man saying? He's just sharing a story, nothing to captivate me. But I said, I must receive this. So I know what I came to do. I stood there. And the moment he finished preaching, he was about to minister the baptism. Then he now said to take a cup of water. Suddenly, my hunger had reached the heavens. I was no longer in that crusade ground. I saw a big bird. The first vision of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit I would see in my life. The bird was not flying. It had like silvery bands on the wings. Hovering around the entire crusade ground. And the Spirit of the Lord took me to Genesis chapter 1. And the Spirit of God hovered around. He was about to pray for miracles. And that was when the Lord told me that the union between the movement of the Spirit and the spoken word is what gives birth to the miraculous. Listen, when I came back from that vision, I didn't know that I had backed the stage. I just rejoiced. I said, this is it. I've gotten it. I've gotten it. I've gotten it. The Lord instructed me to go to Canaan land. Just one or two examples and then I'm done. And said there was a grace to receive on God's servant, Bishop David Oyedipo. I took a seat, got the flight, went there. And then, you know, the rest is history. Finished doing what I went there to do. I came out to enter the car. And the Holy Spirit told me, He said, come out on that ground. And said, put both of your hands on the ground. I said, what is this now? I placed my hands. And it says, from this day, you have entered an overflow anointing. The anointing is like an address. You can know where it came from. I didn't used to prophesy and walk in the prophetic so much. The miraculous, the demonstration of the Spirit. Until a day came, I was watching the video of William Branham. It was in the night. People had insulted that man just because of the little errors that he had towards the end of his life. And you... If you carry that kind of grace, you will start error from day one, based on what you are seeing. So we must salute the level of grace. Was it not the spirit of Moses that came on 70 elders and they could not stand? Part of it all. Sometimes don't criticize men. Find out the weight of what they carry first. A little of the spirit on a man comes on elders and none of them could stand. And, Moses, and they were all prophesying, yet Moses never prophesied. Look at the discipline with that kind of anointing. It came on 70 people and their mouths could not close. And yet Moses was meek, he would keep quiet with that kind of anointing. Are we blessed? I am a product of things. And my encounter with Jesus Christ didn't even jump the steps of honoring these systems. It's amazing that even if you meet Jesus, He will still refer you to the systems that He put upon the earth. My greatly revered mentor, my heart bleeds. The man who taught me on the kingdom. Late Dr. Miles Monroe. 
I love him and I honor him in life and in death. I was in worry for a conference. The morning he died, suddenly my chest started paining me. It was a rare occurrence. I said, what is going on? Because you see, there is a level of genuine connection that deep calls on to deep. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Graces are falling here tonight. The kings to be born for revival to return. For the kings to arise. For revival to return, yeah. Ali, Ali, oh, Ali, oh, Ali, Ali, oh, 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 Ali, Ali, oh, 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 Elijah's arising here tonight. The poor are rising here tonight. For the kind are rising here tonight. For the kings to be born, for revival to return. For the kings to arise, for revival to return. Ali, Ali, oh, Ali, oh. Listen, brothers and sisters, I came here tonight by the Spirit of the Living God as a prophetic breach. Every house is built by some man. Although God is the builder, no man anoints himself. No man ordains himself. It's against the law of growth. And without all contradiction, the less is a he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet. You can receive a prophet in the name of your tribesman, the name of your brother. The name of a man of God. Please listen to me. Listen. I stood in a vision of the Lord. And I saw a generation. An entire generation. And they began to weep and cry. And then I stood in front there. And I said, why the tears? And the generation was shouting. And they said, there is no food and no water. And I said, am I the cause? And they said, you are the cause. That this whole generation is in hunger because of you. I looked back and said, how can a generation blame me? One man for a generation? And then I told them, I said, I'm coming. I must come. Listen. But I was afraid. Please listen. Just bring those under the anointing. Help. Be careful so that. Please listen and be sensitive. Mike, I hope you are working with these guys. Please. Listen. And then I was afraid because I wanted to leave that room to go and help them. Please listen. But there were certain people who were bullying me in that vision. The fear of them made me to be afraid but later on i said this generation is crying too much i said let me go out i took a step of faith in that vision i said if i perish i perish as soon as i open the door listen ah, there is a grace the spirit listen let's tie this up there will be a convocation of the spirit in this place
Now listen, please. Listen. Listen. Please listen. As soon as I stepped out, I saw an old man, a giant old man. He held my hand and said, let's go for that generation. Please hear me, my brothers and my sisters. There are certain men that have no ambition on themselves. I was not called to a church. If I had my way, I would never be doing what I'm doing. This is a mandate of a generation. When God called me, He saw you. And tonight, whether you are a pastor, apostle, prophet, if your heart can be open, my brothers and my sisters, you will receive something that is for a generation. We give you worship, worship, I praise to the King. We give you worship. Bring them out, please. Yeah. I praise to the Lord. We give you worship, worship, I praise to the Lord. Please open your mouth in one minute and begin to cry. Let it be a cry of the Spirit. Man of God, pray. Kodi said, pray. There is a convocation. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many water, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy, ta-da-da, ta-da-da. 
Ta-da-da. Ta-da-da. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Please listen. Now please listen to me. Listen to me. Please listen. The hand of the Lord is upon me. Our time is gone and we may not be able to do I thought we may have time to pray for the sick but may not, not be time but I want you to receive something. Listen. You don't have to be a man of God. No. Now, please hear me. Those up the balcony, please shift away from the main base there so that you don't fall and enjoy yourself. That's number one. Those outside, please be careful so you don't enjoy yourself. Number three, whether you are an usher or not, please, for the sake of management, anyone who is under the anointing close to you, please, and please, be your brother's keeper. I want to pray. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm seeing a fire in the realm of the Spirit. Listen. This is a grace for the prophetic. And as I pray, there are many people who will step into these graces. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Will you open up the gates? Now I stretch my hands. At the count of three, may this mantle for the prophetic, I stand by the rod of the higher priesthood. At the count of three, one, two, three, take that grace now. Take that mantle now. Take that grace. I shift you in the spirit. <laughs> Step into that grace. The eyes that see, the ears that hear. Kaparakatos kabarianda. Ekate kate kate kate. Lift your hands. I'm praying for you. The Lord is showing me a grace for the healing ministry. There are certain people here. You have seen it in your visions. 
right now I stretch my hands wherever you are receive that anointing right now I activate that mantle like the Azusa Street Revival let there be a restoration Mommy, there is an anointing on this woman now. I stretch my hands right now. There is a grace that is on this woman, shifting her to a dimension in the spirit. Two of you hold your hands. Two of you hold your hands. Take that anointing now. Hallelujah Glory to the Lamb Glory to the Father you are seated on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. Please lift your head. Now listen. I'm looking in this congregation and I'm seeing all kinds of change. Let me tell you this. Except God is not God. If you came here with any challenge, watch it leave you now. By the God, listen. By the God of Jeshurun, that rides upon the wings of the wind, I stand with the rod of a higher priesthood, and I declare that at the count of three, as you shout Jesus, every force sitting on your destiny, that will not let you go, Territorial power. The manipulations and installations of darkness. You must leave. Are you ready now? At the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Go now. I command those powers. Go now. Out of them. Out of their lives. Out of their destiny. Out of their lives Now the Lord is that spirit And where the spirit of the Lord is There is liberty You must be released now. I release your family. I release your destiny. Even the lawful captive. I declare. Be released now. Be released now. Be released now. Please pay attention. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is asking me to release speed upon your life. Please listen. Please listen. Listen. Especially for those outside, listen to me. When I pray this prayer, people will start running under the anointing. Please hold them. That's why I'm telling you this. There is a grace for speed. I want to pray for you. You are standing for your family. Some of you are lecturers. Some of you, you have, you have been in the same position almost forever. Right now in the name of Jesus. At the count of three. 
that grace will fall on you for your family inside outside i stretch my hands right now receive speed receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace you will run like elijah receive that grace Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the number 15. And the Lord is saying, I'm restoring you to the realm of visions. 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 Karizani Asakatalakatopria Eska. Embregada Sulekata. Visions. Visions. I'm restoring you to the realm of visions. I want to release the grace for prayer and intercession. Listen, listen, listen. Prayer is not something you do mechanically. You will be tired. There is a grace that quickens a man. There is a grace that gives you stamina in the spirit. And in Jesus' name, I lay my hands on my own head. By the grace of the God who has helped me. I don't know what has happened to your altar, but right now let it catch fire. Fire. Prayer fire. I bring prayer fire to your campus. I bring prayer fire to chaos you. I bring prayer fire to conquer a new dimension of the grace to travail. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are into the worship ministry? Where is this gentleman that sang Theophilus? Come. I want to do something very prophetic. Come. There is a grace on this young man you are seeing that is not just come, stand up, come. Not only will you enter this grace yourself, my friend, God will use you. I don't know you, but look at me. My name is Joshua Selman, and there is a grace that you are stepping into. You have seen the hand of God, but the Lord is asking me if you will to shift you to a level. Your songs, listen, match it. Let me tell you, this gentleman songs will be the songs of revival of nations. It's not because he sang. I don't know him. It's what the Spirit of God is telling me. He may not look like it, but young man, let me tell you, you may be like a despised stone, but there is a grace that is upon you, that you will sing the songs of Miriam, and the angel of his presence will carry those songs to nations. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on you. By the spirit of the living God. From today let the grace. Of psalmistry. Let the grace. That will shift you. I declare songs in the night. And songs in the day. I quicken your spiritual illumination. In greater dimensions. In the name of Jesus. Now please stand up. I want to use you. The young man is weeping. Watch this. I'm holding this guy. As a prophetic signpost, I want to release a grace for the psalmistry for this generation. Father, I hold the hands of this gentleman as one that you have granted access to the grace for the Davidic order of worship. Right now, the worshippers, the Miriams and the Davids, receive the grace for psalmistry now. Receive the grace. Kela baratokata. Write the songs of the spirit. Climb the ladders of worship.
the Lord is taking you to African nations. Go and write it. This is the next level of your ministry. The Lord is taking you to African nations. I'm seeing you in Ghana, South Africa, Zambia. The Lord is taking you to these nations. You will sing the songs of the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Not only Him, I'm praying. There are people who have been kept in the same position. By prophecy, rise to a new level. Rise to a new level. Hallelujah. Listen. I pray for anyone in ministry here. There are great servants of God in this nation. There are great servants in this place. Men of God, I regard and I honor every one of you. My ministry is not in any way to show superiority. It is by the privilege of God's election of grace. But I stand in agreement with every servant of God here. Let the mantle for the revival of this generation, let it fall on you now. Let it fall on your ministry now. Signs and wonders, I declare an activation of ancient spiritual wealth. Cares you hear me? I stand by the privilege of God's grace. And I declare that from today, may your campus become a spiritual portal. We open up the vistas of the Spirit allocated to this campus. And we declare that never will there be a time when God will lack men on this campus. I pray for every fellowship, regardless of denomination, I pray for you. Be strengthened by the hands of the Spirit. I don't know what your family members are going through that you left to come here. But please let me agree with you that in the name of Jesus, and if God be God, may the angel of the Lord's presence go to your homes and correct every pattern. Correct every pattern. that can see scripture the grace for illumination access to the mysteries of the spirit I pray for you may that grace rest upon you now may that grace rest upon you now I pray for every final year student here let's graduate you right here in the name of Jesus, whatever challenge you have that is threatening your graduation, I bring you the power of prophecy. And in the name of Jesus, let the hand of Zerubbabel that started hundred level, may that same hand graduate in the name of Jesus. Every lecturer here, I declare, who is due for promotion, or there are certain benefits, by the God of heaven, may you step into your next level. I banish every doctrine of error from your campus forever every operation of cultism and witchcraft I define their spiritual borders and I drive them out of your campus
I don't know what door has refused to open. The Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bands of iron in thunder. I declare over every closed door, over your life and destiny, let it be open now. Let it be open now. Let it be open now. Please hear me. If there is anyone here marked for death, or your family members, that they will see an obituary and say survived by, death, I command you, leave everyone and every family here. Listen, I don't know what left your life, relationships, money, opportunities, the same way Samuel caused the donkey to return back. I call everything that has left you, hear the word of the Lord, return back now. Return back now. Can I pray for your spiritual life? Listen, many believers are religious but are not truly passionate about God. One leg in, one leg out. Today here, tomorrow there, there is a grace for stability. Listen, the Bible says, nevertheless the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, it says, seeing that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us, and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. I pray by the supply of God's grace, every habit here eating you up, everything that that is a threat. To your Christian experience, be free from it now. 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 Masturbation, pornography, immorality, all kinds of things. Be free from it now. Hallelujah. Let the fire of evangelism, like an Olympic light, let it stand upon the spiritual gate of your campus. May your campus become a place not just of learning but of salvation. Hallelujah. Listen to me. You have honored me and you have received the grace that God has so graciously given. I pray for you. Any man that fights you goes down immediately. Any man that fights you goes down immediately. Hallelujah. I want to make our time is gone. But give me five minutes. I want to make an altar call. Please, if you can just give them back. Now listen very carefully, please. Altar calls are trivialized by many, 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 many individuals. Because for us, it looks like it is cheap 
it is not charismatic there are people here inside of the balcony and outside right from when this conference started to the times of worship the times of the word the times of the impartation the spirit of the Lord began to speak to you and to tell you that it is time to win that war of your destiny you may have been born by Christian parents I don't care whether you are a leader I don't care whether you are a pastor the Bible says ye must be born again and there are people here you are hearing my voice please listen to me it is important to mean business with Jesus and please let this not just be an emotional thing the space here may not be enough and I don't want you to interrupt anybody but you are here right now and you are saying apostle I'm tired of the way my life is I need to have a genuine encounter not just a superstitious religious thing I mean it with Jesus I'm going to count one to ten 